Warning, do not listen to this podcast if hearing about freedom and liberty is not legal for you in your community. And if so, you should immediately move to a hipper community. Welcome to the Freedom Fiends Podcast, a weekly web lab where Michael W. Dean and Nima Vadadi cover the punk rockinist, hip hopinist current events, as well as timeless universal truths about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, because there's no such thing as half free. The Freedom Fiends Podcast, available from freedomfiends.com. That's F R E E D O M F E E N S dot com. Freedom Fiends is proudly syndicated by Alterati.com and the Liberty Radio Network. Welcome to the Freedom Fiends Distance Learning Anarchy Series with Freedom Fiends Michael W. Dean. Broadcasting from my windowless bunker. And Nima Vidati. Go, go, Freedom Fiends! Worms, what's up, Nima? Yo, this is Nima. So, um, you got kidnapped yesterday by the Central Scrutinizer, and Ben Stone had to fill in. Yes, I was taking some harsh blunts, man. It was totally fugly. <laughs> What'd you think of uh, Ben's imitation of you? I don't know. It was pretty chill. Yeah, we tried. Well, he and I spent <laughs> like, my imitation of Ben imitating me. So. He, we we spent like an hour <laughs> prepping for that. I had him watch the Boondocks. I had him watch the the airplane clip of June Cleaver going. I speak jive. Uh, we looked at, and then we searched like hip hop slang. It's funny when you search hip hop slang on Google, the first two or three websites that come up are like university English department websites where they have like de- uh, decoded like this. African American studies yes, term papers yes. and stuff like that. Yeah, well, yeah. well, like actual glossaries. And, uh, you know, we were kind of going for like, we wanted it to be a little bit old school or actually outdated to how we think it would sound if the central scrutinizer tried to sound like Nemo. Right. Right. <laughs> like if some geeky goon tried to be. Yeah. Me. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. It was hilarious. <clears throat> I didn't listen to the whole thing yet, but uh, that is my first priority when I start listening to podcasts today. I haven't I started am, listening to podcasts yet today except for that little clip because I'm going to record podcasts first. I am piping some hard blunts, yo. <laughs> some fug- I'm dropping some fugly beats. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It was yeah. hilarious. It was fun. Good, man. We good, fun good job, guys. Good job. Yeah, and we didn't tell anybody that Ben was going to be on. Uh, you had a family engagement, so we had Ben on, and uh, I didn't tell anybody. Yeah. I just said, I just said it's going to be a very special episode. You know, like yeah. like like an after, like school, after school special. special. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, and even like when we were sound checking and stuff, like we sound checked before we went live on the stream, but uh, you know, just to make sure he was there, I was like, okay, Nima, clear your throat, and he'd be like. <clears throat> <clears throat> <laughs> and then we got John and it kind of progressed to where like I figured out it wasn't Nima and I was like, where's Nima? And he's like, Nima's safe. <laughs> he's with us. Don't yeah. worry. Bring $100,000 in unmarked bills in to unmarked, Langley, Virginia. Unmarked gold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was fun. It was real fun. Yeah. And uh, good let's times. See. Yeah. I, I had family engagement. It was Christmas one of three. So third through the whole thing so thank god oh here's the sleigh bell sound i'll send this to you listen ah ben quaker ben quaker sent you some fugly beats yeah yeah i'm gonna use that in the new song a gun for everyone Uh, wow what what was the alternate title you had for it oh peace on earth and a gun for every child a gun for every child okay i think you should use that line it wasn't gonna be a christmas themed song at all but michael was like put some sleigh bells in the chorus and i was like (laughs) yeah that's a good idea we could put out a video before christmas time and uh sandwich between christmas and all the gun control insanity it might be a a nice time to strike while the iron's hot yeah, um, but I had the idea for the concept of the song and the beat for it like months and months ago. So, um, but yeah, man, those sleigh bells sound good. Like the other sleigh bells you sent me sounded like they had some kid with Down syndrome kicking around. <laughs> Wait, sleigh you, which sleigh bell sounded good? The ones you just played me. Okay, well, I'm sending them to you with the note and CCing Ben. Yeah, and said, "Here's some fugly beats from Ben Stone." Yeah. 
Yeah. Those aren't fugly. Those are clean. The other ones you sent me were fugly. They sounded like... No, man. You're so uh, out of it. Fugly's good. Like, fat is good. Fugly's the new fat. Don't you know, man? Hip hop. You you went away for a day and hip hop slang updated. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Speak up, man. Speak up. It's hard. It's rare that I have to tell you to speak up. You're usually, man, furthermore, the government. We didn't start talking about the government yet. You're still mellow. Mm, mm. Fugly. Okay. Okay, so we got a $250 donation from Michael LeCompte yesterday, and Ben Stone got a three. Uh, I'm sorry, $250 donation uh, from Michael LeCompte, and uh, Ben Stone got a donation from him too, and we're kind of blown away by it. And we, we wrote him and said thanks and worms, and uh, he said, yeah, I'm, I'm drinking Christmas wine, and uh, I love converting my money to liberty, and whatever he's drinking, I wish everyone else were drinking it this Christmas too. Converting his money to liberty. Uh, I love that more than yeah, the Christmas yeah. wine, man. Yeah, good idea. Yep, he That's said he's awesome. a wine ar- a wine archist, which is a wine wine, archist. wine aficionado anarchist, I guess. Ah, uh, ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Karen DeCosta is kind of like that. She loves her wine, yeah. and she's always talking about this wine called Anarchy when she writes her blog posts. Well, I'm a but, wine archist, but I spell it W I N E. Because you like to whine. I like to yeah. whine. <laughs> yeah. Nice. nice. Yeah. But uh, that's kind of mind blowing donation. I mean, that's like yeah, that's, that's like good. the donations we should be getting all the time. That's like the kind of donations that like that Adam you know, Curry gets. Adam Curry gets, or you know, yeah. Obama gets. Well, he gets that if you add about four zeros to it. But um, yeah, you know, the Christmas spirit is high in the fiends. We've gotten a bunch of donations that uh, probably total about four hundred bucks. In the past week or so, I it's it's I think, strange because you're always talking about how much you hate Christmas, but I guess you say you Christmas sucks because people aren't are buying cheap Chinese crap instead of donating and converting their money right. to liberty. Like well, I think that the ad, I think the ad that I made touched some uh, some some souls with touched some you people know, in all touch, the wrong place, all the right all places, special places. Yeah, <laughs> I think uh, you know because it was a kind of like Christmas sucks ad that like wasn't heavy and wasn't eh, Christmas, you know, like a lot of anti-Christmas stuff where they kill Santa or whatever. Yeah. You know, ours was lighthearted and it was kind of like, it was exactly how I felt about Christmas. And it was very much like, uh, nice. you know, why just rotely go through this list, giving this stuff to all these people who won't really appreciate it. And they're all status anyway. So give the money to the fiends. And yeah, apparently it worked. And I'm going to run that every Christmas, you know, starting December 1st, every year that we have a cast. Hey. It works and it's funny. Yeah, it does. So give us, it does. It's funny, so give us money. Works and it's funny, so give us money. Yeah, yeah. Although, you know, there is a lot of other things you can do for Christmas. I mean, donating to us is awesome, um, but I got some ammo uh, so far on my first Christmas. No, people should, only don- people should only donate to us. Well, if they give ammo to us, that's... Uh, to us, although, right. That as long as the, the to us is at the end of the statement is all Michael cares about. Yeah, yeah. You and, it's really, and it's really me. Yeah. Because I'm, really my- I'm a Grinch. But don't <laughs> mail me Scrooge, don't mail me ammo. You, You're only a family, only family members should give ammo because uh, sending ammo is kind of difficult until we get those digital printers hooked up to our computer, 3D printers. <laughs> is anybody d- doing like 3D foundries or 3D printers that will do metal? Is anybody well, trying no, that? Well, no. What you have to do is you print. I've, I've talked about that. You can't do it. Uh, I've talked about the way it's done for modeling, even by gun companies like Smith and Wesson does this, they print something Ooh, right. 3d and plastic and mm-hmm. then they make a mold of it in sand and then pour metal into it. Mm-hmm. So, okay. which is actually yeah. a very old technology. You know, they used to carve the thing out of wood or wax and then put it in the mold and do it. Now they just do it with, with a 3d printer. seems like it would be possible one day to have uh, those two included and automated at the same time though. Right. Yeah, well, not anytime soon. But that could the thing is, the the melting point of metal is so high; it'd be really hard to use it with any kind of printer, because yeah. uh, it would melt whatever it's you know, everything else in it would be melted. Mm. It's mm. it's uh it's not needed yet because it's not really needed yeah. to develop it, and it would be hard to develop it. It's not needed because you can easily print something in plastic and then make a a uh, oh what's it called a reverse mold or a takeaway mold or a mm. something mold. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I was getting a little fantastic there, a little yeah. Adam Kokek, oh, Adam Kokekish. Yeah, Kokekish. I mean that's how like big brass, you know, statues are made of presidents mm-hmm. and war heroes. Mm-hmm. They they make them out of clay and then they mold them in sand in two halves of sand and remove, you know, open the sand up, mm-hmm. take the model out 
or take the sculpture out and then close it up and pour brass into it and then just mm. file off the rough edges. All right. I, I was listening to this um, one of the Adam versus the Man shows, and it was him and Stefan Molyneux on. And um, Adam <laughs> had, had, I guess, had Jeff Tucker on recently, and so he was on this kick that um, – that what's the point of doing all this libertarian philosophy and talking about it all the time because technology is going to free the world anyway and there's no point in us doing this. Um, really? And Molyneux was like, yeah, yeah. And, and Molyneux was kind of like, well, you know, you, you got to have the philosophy behind it. You still got to have the principles and you still got to – the state – Molyneux's other thing was, you know, the state also has all the technology and more yeah, than I us. Yeah, I knew he'd say that and he <laughs> does understand that. I mean he talked about that in the interview I did with him of like – it's the first time in history where the technology has really of the people has really almost been keeping up with the state. Well, except in defense, which is I think where it matters because yeah, it's, like, you know, it's also in, one of the first times in history where the state the state defense or not defense, what we'll, we'll call it offense. The state's weapons have vastly outpaced uh, the average person's weapons right, by like right. orders of giant magnitude. Well, but did you see the the DIY armed drone video? Oh crap, I was supposed to watch that. I don't even uh, want to, I don't even want to link that but I'll talk about it. <laughs> okay. Um it's basically there's there's this site god what's this called it's called like bad ideas or something. <laughs> that um, sounds like a great site. It's it's uh, Hold my beer. You, you have to click hold my beer before you watch any of the videos. <laughs> is that what it says? <laughs> no, I'm just Okay, it's called around. Dangerous Information is the YouTube channel if you search dangerous uh, uni- information and citizen drone warfare. I mean, this is a site that like shows you how to pick locks and things like that. And uh-huh. it's not aimed at criminals. It's like people who think information should be free. And, you know, right. if you know how to pick locks, you know how to design a lock that can't be picked as easily. So they do things like that. And they have, um, they took a quadrocopter drone, like, you know, it's a little helicopter with four things on it. And that they bought at a hobby store for, you know, 300 bucks or something, radio controlled. Mm-hmm. And they mounted a, um paintball gun on it and then had a radio <laughs> control for the paintball gun and nice. the guy the guy describing it has like you know a mask on like it has a bandana over his face and a hat and, uh-huh. you can't, and a glasses right. and you can't really see what he looks like and so it they looks set, like a terrorist training video <laughs> yeah it does and they set up a bunch of uh of man man-shaped man-sized targets in a field at a shooting range somewhere and they went at it with this thing and in very short time, like 20, 30 seconds, no, nah, like 20 seconds, he put, you know, five shots of paintball into the, you know, the 10 ring, like the heart, not the 10 ring, but like probably a five or six inch ring over the heart of each of like four or five targets, hmm. just going from one to the other. Wow. Now, people argued in the comments a lot that with an actual gun, you'd be dealing with more recoil, but. Oh, yeah. I would argue that with a 22 handgun, you wouldn't have all that much more recoil than you would, uh, you know, with a paintball gun. And the thing was heavy too. I mean, it had like, uh, you know, one of those kind of funnel magazines that holds the paintballs, and the paintball the paintballs are about an inch in diameter, you uh-huh. know, little plastic balls, yeah, or wax balls or whatever, and gelatin balls, I think. And, uh, you know, I mean, he added probably like four pounds of weight to the thing. So you could put a 22, a small 22 on it. And I would say that with proof of concept, and I wouldn't encourage anyone to do this, but you know, for proof of concept, scientific DIY purposes, I think if you could have a 22 on it and fire it once before the thing flips and crashes, it would be a proof of concept. Yeah, it would be. And hopefully we can get back to the point where we're at some kind of, um, some kind of levelness with uh, with the the playing field as far as the state because you know a twenty two is is a twenty two compared to what the state has which is hellfire missiles that literally are like lightning bolts from afar. Did 20, you yeah, read that? which is the name of this episode, which ah, we're going to talk yes, about. Um, we are, which is what a drone operator for the Air Force said he felt like while killing people with drone missiles was he felt like he was God throwing lightning bolts from afar. Hmm. Um, 22, well, first of all, I want to say that this quadrocopter also had a video camera on it, so it wouldn't have to be in line of sight, uh, for his proof of concept. And it wasn't, you know, he was, it may have been, but he was watching through a video monitor doing this Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. 22s are nothing to sneer at, man. I mean, it's kind of been, 
and I'm not encouraging anything. I'm talking about historical things. I'm talking about, you know, DIY scientific things of why can't we try things and not use them? Um, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, a 22 has long been the, an ass- the assassin's tool of choice. Uh, right, right. Because a silence 22 is so quiet, you can do it, you know, in a crowded street and people, they hear something, mm-hmm. but they're not going to recognize it as a gun or be able to tell where it's coming from. It's like, like farting in a mosh pit. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying we should sneer at the 22. I'm just saying. Uh, it's I mean, you like saw a Shooter. You saw a Shooter. He oh, came I saw up, a Shooter. Yeah. You know, yeah. he saved the little brown guy that looked like you from the CIA torture guys or the Blackwater torture guys with, you know, a, a kid's 22 with a little scope on it mm-hmm. and using a soda bottle on the end as a silencer. And right. the guys didn't know what it was or where it was coming from. And, and, uh, and our hero took out three or four of them, you know, from a hundred yards on a boat. Mm-hmm. On a and it's a lot more surgical robot. and humane to borrow the parlance of modern warfare from the state than a hellfire missile. Uh, yeah, there's there's no accidentally destroying a whole household of children with a 122 yeah. bullet like yeah. you can with one hellfire missile. Yep. And uh, yeah, 22s have long been used, you know, going back to like World War One for assassins. Uh, mm-hmm. Basically, if you if you can hit somebody in the ear or in the eye, it goes into their brain and bounces, bounces around, around and yep. kills them. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Horrible, horrible things that people shouldn't do ever. Yeah, totally. And uh, hitting something in the eye or the ear with a 22 at a distance is uh, not a lot of people can do it. Yeah. Yeah. You got to be good. As That's what, you know, that. you got to be trained by the government to do it. <laughs> uh yeah yeah well the the government is the only organization that uh has the inclination that's and, professional and of, the only and organization what, that's professional enough to use this 22 to assassinate these bad people the op the opposite of that the opposite of professional because like like we said in another show professional means it implies somebody's willing to pay you voluntarily for your services yeah and the government's is- the only organization that steals enough money to have a division of labor so huge that they can spend uh, you know, millions of dollars just training a core of people who do nothing but learn how to shoot all day for years. And you know what I say to them? Grow a soul, son. Grow a soul. <laughs> I saw that as the, that? I saw that as the comment somewhere in something, and I searched it on the mm-hmm. internet, and it was like completely unique. Like this is the only guy who's ever said that. It was in yeah, some comments that's kinda, about. Yeah, kind of nice. Better than I really like ball, it. Well, grow some balls is great too, but. Yeah, no, man. As a everyone says that. Grow some balls is like you know. I mean, you could say that. That's what that's what the government thugs could say to you when you're criticizing them murdering people. But grow a soul, son. I like that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, you're right. People do say that in reference to the government, but uh, I I think people who want the government to kill people are pussies. They have pussies and need to grow yeah. some balls. Their lips is, are like flopping around around their thighs and stuff. Because which, which is interesting because in that article about drones that we're going to link, it's a profile of two drone operators: one who flipped out and couldn't do it anymore and stopped doing it, and one who's still doing it and they didn't mm-hmm. use her real name. I actually want to. I looked for the guy who gave up on it. I wanted to turn him on to the fiends, but um, yeah, it, yeah, it says totally. he's on Facebook, but he's not. I imagine that when this article came out, a bunch of people told him he was a big pussy and, you know, damaging the government by criticizing the drone program he used to be in and just went away. Should we talk? Should we go ahead and move into talking about this uh, titular article now? Sure. It's in Der Spiegel, which is Der German Spiegel. for the mirror. I've actually mm. read Der Spiegel as a newspaper in the morning with my coffee in German. Oh, it's the nice, national. Nice. It's kind of like a national, um, oh, it's like USA Today. Like? Yeah, but a little more New York, uh, you know, with like the kind of like the Wall Street Journal, but not as focused on economics, but more, ah, you know, how the right. Wall Street Journal has actual hard hitting articles mm-hmm. and USA Today doesn't. Yeah. yeah. I can't really think of a corollary. There's not an American corollary. Okay. okay. Which is, did you see the thing? You didn't see the thing on The Daily Show the other day. They went down, they sent the, what's the correspondent, the black guy's name? I forget his name. Wyatt Sinek. <clears throat> yeah, they sent him down to Puerto Rico to interview. This is kind of mind-blowing. Puerto Rico's top show, not just top news show, but the top show in the country is a news show that's really hard-hitting where they get like, you know, the governor on and say like, okay, why did you take bribes from X, Y, and Z? You know, like stuff huh. they could never do in America. Yeah, yeah. But the person asking the questions is a puppet. <laughs> and then they had Wyatt Sinek on to do it. And then they replaced Wyatt Sinek with a puppet that looked like he was from, what's the show they had with puppets on, uh, on Comedy Central? 
uh, Crank Yankers. Yeah, it looked like a Crank Yankers <laughs> puppet of Wyatt Snack, and they had him like trying to interview the president about drones or something. And like they, they threw, they, they actually got him in the white house press corps with those people got the puppet in there and then like threw the puppet out, like physically threw it out. It's pretty funny. Nice. Oh God. I got to watch that. Um, yeah. Sweet. Sweet. What was the, the Puerto Rican puppet? Is he like the, the Mexican stereotypes on the Spanish channel in Arrested well, Development with like the freckles yes, and the red hair? It's, like it's a well, it's a woman, and it's actually a woman inside a puppet costume. I think, you wow. know, but it, and it's life size, but it's like, yeah, it looks like a Mexican uh, game show. I mean, puppet. It's kind of she's kind of like she's probably about. 50 years old and really busty and has way too much makeup on. She kind of looks like a mm. sexy grandma puppet. It's pretty funny, man. <laughs> and she talks like this. I mean, literally, yeah. like she talks See? like a parody of, of like Puerto Rican puppetry. You, I don't know. Why man. you get so sleepy when you're on the job? <laughs> it's no bueno. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. racist. I, it looked racist. It looked like somebody's, <laughs> you know, racist interpretation of Puerto Ricans, but yeah, it's their yeah. biggest selling show in the country. Huh. Huh. Well, it makes me to meet the press look like a snooze fest. It is. I watched meet the press the other day, which used to be when I was a kid, it was like the most important news show and it's been going for like 40 years. But the other day I was watching it on there. And it was just a bunch of Democrats talking about why we need to outlaw guns. Yeah, man, it's the most important news show for the establishment to yeah. tell you what the establishment wants to have happen. I mean, any, uh, anything that takes Diane Feinstein seriously is not news. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't that the show where um, they had Ron Paul on and basically harangued him for his quote unquote theory that uh, that you know blowback exists <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. and and helped the the war on terror or not helped the war on terror, but is one of the reasons why terrorists try to attack American did you, targets. Did you see the libertarian ANCAP Austrian drinking game? No, no. Oh, it's great. It's this. Uh, I'll, I'll I might use it for the the image today. It's uh. It's basically you take a drink when someone says you lack empirical evidence, you hate poor people, property is theft, inflation isn't a problem, or without government regulations, we'd have poison food and air and water. <laughs> um, you take a shot when someone says you agree to the social contract, World War II ended the depression, free markets caused the 08 financial crisis, everybody benefits from programs X, Y, and Z. Uh, programs X, Y, and Z exist. Thus, they may be, they must be successful or uses the phrase wage slavery. Mm. And you chug, 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 chug. When someone says corporations would take over, who would build the roads? <laughs> Government creates wealth, move to Somalia. Paul Krugman has a Nobel prize. Where's yours? And there's not enough gold in the world <laughs> <laughs> or there's not enough gold in the world to make it a primary currency. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Uh, so where do you play it with that? Like Christmas party with your other status friends? <laughs> you'd get drunk. You'd get alcohol poisoning if you played this you room would. full of status, man. <laughs> you would. They do it. They do it intentionally. They just kill yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. You know, the you gearing know, Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, um, being at a, a holiday, a family holiday party, um, that's not a family that's my own. Like it's a, my married into family. It's my in-laws. Um, I did notice something about American culture and maybe why, um, why we don't really discuss philosophy and ideas as much. Um, it seemed like every time something came up that was kind of controversial, uh, you know, like there was some Dallas Cowboy football player who was drunk, had a DUI, and once he could drive again, he got in a wreck, and his friend, who was related to the team somehow, I'm not up the news on this, also died, and somehow the guy was still on the field, like the guy who was driving the car and was drunk, but his friend died. And like they were, somebody was calling him a murderer and this and that. And so we started to talk about that, that kind of concept um, of, you know, drunk driving and, and, you know, well, if you got, I, I, I posited, if you got in a wreck um, and you weren't drunk and you killed somebody and it was just an accident or you suck at driving, they never look at you with this criminal intent like they do if you were tipsy or buzzed or drunk. Um, and we started to talk about it for a little bit, but immediately, like, some play happened on the football screen. And, and so all of a sudden, everybody just started talking about football again. Um, I feel like at holidays, football is what keeps people's minds off. Uh, it gives them the, that <laughs> quick excuse to change To not the murder subject. each other like they do on Thanksgiving <laughs> all the time. But wouldn't that be that wouldn't be a good thing if, if all, we could sit there and discuss ideas instead of leaving them uh, the arguments half-argued or a few sentences and then, oh, that was a great play. Uh, or, damn, did you see that hit? 
You know, I feel like football. Football is great to watch, but um, it seems like. And if it were football, you know, it'd be something else. It'd be. Well, there's, uh, there's actually a did you phrase. See Britney's vagina or something. There was like actually that. a phrase when I was a kid that I don't hear much anymore, which is that polite people don't discuss politics or religion at the at the table at the dinner table. <laughs> yeah, I hear that too, and I kind of get the concept because it's your family, and you don't want to alienate them, and you have to see them. Well, I think it's something. Like, but, but, I, it's something that statists even say, like you know, and religious oh, people, yeah, like yeah, we don't, totally. you know, we don't want that kind of stuff at the, at the family dinner table. There's actually a um, a really funny joke on that at uh, uh, the the oatmeal has a thing about the difference between Thanksgiving as a kid and Thanksgiving as an adult. And, mm. uh, you know, it shows him as a kid sitting at the kids table and everyone's like, we and having fun. And over over at the parents table, they're like, I'll tell you what's wrong with this country. It's the Democrats. No, you're wrong. It's the Republicans. And then it shows him as, as an adult at that table and they're still having the same dis argument about Democrats and Republicans. And he's like looking wistfully over at the child's table and they're all having fun. And he's wishing he was there. <laughs> right. Right. Well, I mean, what they would say is, Oh, you know, it's not the time and the place. It's Christmas dinner. It's holiday dinner. Let's just love each other and eat food. Uh, but I kind of feel like as a society, do we have a time and a place? Well, you know, I've added a new category on the blog. It's called too soon. Mm -hmm. And it's a question mark and it's a joke. It's for like for my discussion of, of saying my blog post about saying that uh, that uh, school shootings are the state's fault. You know, one of the right. tags I gave it, one of the categories I gave it was too soon. Because people mm -hmm. always say that. And it's actually the Daily Show did a thing on that. They're like, when's the time to do it? And uh, they, they actually showed this news clip of the of like recently it was like. And recently in New York City, there was a 27 hour period with no muggings, mur you know, no murders, no killings, no shootings, no stabbings. And, the, and, the, and the John Stewart is like, that's when they should have done it. And I'm thinking <laughs> there probably were, there was aggression during that period. It's New York City. There were cops arresting people. That's aggression. There were, there were, there were there people taxes. paying sales tax yeah. <laughs> when they were at the store. That was aggression. Uh, yep. Let's take a little but break yeah. here and sell some stuff. Hi, I'm Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends, and like you, I'm concerned with privacy on the internet. The electronic police state is strangling our previous protections, and the central scrutinizer is trying to squint into all areas of our lives. That's why smart people surf the net with a VPN or virtual private network. I use a VPN from Bola VPN. Bola VPN has your utmost security in mind and will allow you to surf, email, and do other computing tasks without leaving a trail of breadcrumbs across the internet. Unlike many other VPN providers, Bola VPN doesn't log traffic. With Bola VPN, you can change your apparent location or disappear completely. Bola VPN has been around since 2007, which is OG in the VPN world. Bola VPN is easy to install and configure. Best of all, it can be had for less than 25 cents a day, which is a small price to pay for this much security. And if you open a support ticket saying you heard about them through the Freedom Fiends, they'll add three extra days free. That's Bola VPN at B O L E H V P N dot net. A science fiction comic adventure from Big Head Press. Quantum Vibe. It's year 2523. There are colonies on Venus, Mars, and Mercury. People travel in bubbles, fly at hyper speed. With brain implants and artificial gravity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system on a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. Quantum vibe. There's a robot girl and zany creatures made with genetically engineered features. And corporate villains crave the opportunity to steal a profit from my mother's ingenuity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system on a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. Quantum vibe. The Bad Quaker staff has discovered how easy it is to get everything you need for the holidays at Amazon. Everything from the coolest decorations to hangover remedies, and everything from the latest movies and music to poop stain remover. If you follow the Amazon link at badquaker.com, Amazon will give badquaker.com a tiny portion of the purchase. It won't cost you any extra, but you will be supporting this podcast. Thank you. Roland. Yeah. So I, I was thinking, though, I mean, when is the time and place? And I don't feel like we really have that as a society because 
it's always impolite. It's always something you're not supposed to do. And and the forums that we do have, I feel like, are all only with people that uh, that mostly agree with you, or it's so anonymized and it's on Facebook that people just end up getting into bitch fest where they call each other misses and ask if they went to retard school. I'm You've done talking that. about my yeah. I was talking about myself. That's why I picked something I said. Yeah. So I'm not hating on other people. Um, so I, I don't know. I feel like there's a, a big lack there, um, and, and I, I feel like that's kind of important, right? Because it, it ends up that the only people, the only thing people think, the only topics that people are feel safe discussing are these very safe pop culture things like celebrity gossip and sports, which I really don't understand how society as a thing has so much interest in that. And I don't know, people's priorities are uh, really kind of mind blowing to me. I, I'm a big fan of this. Uh, there's this zine, this like underground newspaper kind of thing in Casper uh, Bedlam publishing is the website mm-hmm. Bedlam publishing and the guy's an ANCAP, but like he just kind of points out the stupidity of everybody and his writing kind of reminds me of Jim Goad. And I think I'm going to have him, uh, at least come on the Sunday show as a call sometime and discuss okay. things. He's, he's really, I like his thing. It's just pointing out the stupidity of everybody and he does it really well. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So check um, out bedlam publishing. Bedlam publishing. And yes. it's, uh, yeah. It's, and before we, uh, got off on one of our, uh, caniacal <laughs> concentric circle tangents there, uh, we were going to talk about this Der Spiegel article. Am I pronouncing yeah. that? Germanically yeah. enough. Canonical. Canonical. <laughs> Canonical. 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 All right. Yeah. All right, DJ Canonical. You <laughs> win me. So uh so yeah, I say I got, go I got one I got one thing really quick. It's German right. and it's good. You're like German. Right. Right. Is it German? Right. Yeah, it's um when we talked about Gering uh recently about what he said about, you know, how 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 you keep a tyranny is you ah. criticize people for uh criticizing the war. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we forgot to mention that he, where he said that he said that at the Nuremberg trials, ah, when he was being <laughs> tried for crimes against humanity for being a Nazi. So, yeah. you know, yeah. that's the excuse when they're pressed to the wall is either uh, I was just following orders, or you know, <laughs> you, you got to you got to quell the uh, crit- criticism of the military, yeah. and you make yeah. the people look weak and anti patriotic. Right. And I guess there's a caveat that the Nuremberg trials weren't perfect and it was really the winning state rubbing the losing state's nose in, in its own shit. It was. But uh, but I think the concept of holding state authority accountable uh, is something you can take out of Nuremberg and praise. And yeah. hopefully we can have a, a stateless Nuremberg one day. Yeah, Nuremberg uh, trials for drug warriors and everything yes, else. Yes, which is another song we're working on. It's pretty much done except for some yeah. mixing, but I don't know if we'll have a video for that. So now that the Germans are all good and uh, <sighs> don't ever do anything oppressive to their people, <laughs> well, what does Der Spiegel say? Der Spiegel. All right, and this is probably the Der most... Der Spiegel. It's not the Der most Spiegel. Per- it's not Dear Abby. It's Der. Der. Der Spiegel. Like Dare to keep kids off of drugs and violence. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, so Der Spiegel... Um, wrote an article. I guess that's like the fifth time I've said that. <laughs> and, I keep interrupting. Uh, it's, you know, it's, the, you know, dare, dare to keep kids off drugs. One mm-hmm. of the things they try to do is get kids into the military. Dare to keep kids off drugs and street violence so they can go do authorized violence. They also glorify cops. Like I remember looking at the little comic book, uh, and the cops are like friendly, and they're like the best looking characters, and they're the heroes of the little comic book they give you, or little illustration book they give you yeah. with the dare course. And uh, the drug users, <laughs> I mean, are all obviously junkies and look horrible. And yeah. Where, where, and they don't mention what ben, ben mentioned yesterday is the uh, patent someone just filed on handcuffs that can deliver an electric shock and inject you with drugs. Yeah. yeah. Uh, wow. Okay, so Der Spiegel, finally, if we've um, I'll let you do it. Up. I'll let you. I won't interrupt. I won't think. Well, well what for you? What do you think of the article, man? Because it's it's an amazing article, and I was like, wow, we really needed to talk about this and discuss this. So it's not just something that I thought was great. No, I loved uh, it. It, it. And it's great because uh, it's the most personalized I've ever seen 
um, talking about the drone operators because we always make fun of them and say they're fat and cowardly and lazy and sit in their little air conditioned thing in Nevada with Cheeto stained uh, fingers pressing buttons that kill people. And they do do that, and the article does show how they do it, but there's a person who's doing that. Um, and one of the people here uh, is actually named, it's Brandon Bryant, um, and he couldn't take it anymore. He actually fell into the military sort of by accident uh, and realized he could get free education and all this money and that whole spiel that the recruiters give you. And so he ended up doing it, and he tested really well. So they put him uh, in the drone program. Um, and the first... I think it was the first day or one of his first days uh, he saw uh, a group of soldiers, American soldiers in Iraq, get blown up by an IED. And uh, he saw it, – it's called an I, right? It's a circle. I guess the quote-unquote insurgents, the defenders, um, burned a tire in the concrete because that's what you do to soften up the asphalt before you dig an IED into it. And so You, you can don't. Tell they do. They do. The rhetorical you. If you were you, it's it's like in second person, the uh, like your book, like your book you wrote. Yeah. Um, so the insurgents put an eye there. He could see an eye because they burned it and you know made it soft, stuck the bomb in there. The car was headed towards it, you know, a Humvee with American troops in it, and he couldn't say he couldn't let them know anything because they were under radio silence. So he had to watch them from like a mile or so away, headed towards certain death, and uh, and couldn't say anything about it. And so that was like his first impression of what it was like to be a drone operator. To literally, it's like like those TV shows where the train's coming at somebody and they're too stupid to move out of the way, uh, and it's cheesy because like, oh well, in real life they would have just walked out of the way. It was like that. Why couldn't he like, have droned the IED before they got there? Well, that's the other thing. The, the other point that I felt we needed to get to is um, these o these operators they don't choose when ah, to press the kill right. button. And they don't like the term drone because that suggests that the things are autonomous and don't have the mm -hmm. brave button pushers behind it. And when they first started the drone program, they had a real hard time getting quote unquote pilots for it because uh, it was really looked down on. Like, you know, yeah. that's not real soldiering. You're just pushing buttons. You're just playing video games. So they had to actually pull people out of retirement originally for it. Like, you know, right. actual pilots. Right. But I found it really interesting the two different reactions to this on high ordering you to press the button that kills people. Um, the guy who gives his name, Bryant, um, he can't really take it anymore. Eventually it wears on him and he thinks it's horrible. Uh, and what happens is, is – okay, so here. Here's a great example of it. Do you have the article pulled up? Let's go ahead and yeah. read this little interaction. Y you here. go ahead and read it. All right. All right. Uh, here we go. Y you're on fire, man. Okay. So – I'm going to read this whole sort of a story of how it works. This is a moment when when some people in Afghanistan are getting killed by an American in a thing. Okay, so Wait, did Brian, you say you're going to read the whole article? No. No, oh. I'm going to read this whole okay. section that explains okay. the moments Go when ahead. you're in that drone thing. So Bryant was one of them, a drone operator, and he remembers one incident very clearly when a Predator drone was circling in a figure 8 pattern in the sky above Afghanistan, more than 10,000 miles away from where he was. There was a flat-roofed house made of mud with a shed used to hold goats in the crosshairs. As Bryant recalls, when he received the order to fire, he pressed a button with his left hand and marked the roof with a laser. The pilot sitting next to him pressed the trigger on a joystick, causing the drone to launch a Hellfire missile. There were 16 seconds left till impact. These moments are like in slow motion, Bryant says. Images taken with an infrared camera attached to the drone appeared on his monitor, transmitted by satellite, with a two to five second time delay. With seven seconds left to go, there was no one to be seen on the ground. Bryant could still have diverted the missile at that point. Then it was down to three seconds. Bryant felt as if he had to count each individual pixel on the monitor. Suddenly, a child walked around the corner, he says. Second zero was the moment in which Bryant's digital world collided with the real one in a village between Baglan and Mazar-e-Sharif. Bryant saw a flash on the screen, the explosion. Parts of the building collapsed. The child had disappeared. Bryant had a sick feeling in his stomach. Did we just kill a kid? He asked the man sitting next to him. Yeah, I guess that was a kid, the other pilot replied. Was that a kid? They typed into a chat window on the monitor. Then someone they didn't know answered. Someone sitting in a military command center somewhere in the world who had observed their attack. 
No, that was a dog, the person wrote. They reviewed the scene on video. A dog on two legs, they questioned. You know what that reminds me of? Uh, the Simpsons where Homer sort of kidnaps Flanders and takes him to Vegas, and Flanders doesn't want to go because it's Sin City. The episode ends with both of them getting drunk and getting married to hussies. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, great, yeah. And there's a scene where, where Flanders is at a, you know at the gaming table, and and he's he's praying to God, like, is this a sin? Should I do this? I think I should stop. And this voice from this like camera above him that has a speaker in it oh, go, yes. goes, keep gaming. Keep and he's like, gaming. what? What? And he says, keep gaming. What's that? It means keep gambling. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a dog. It. Yeah. No, the that central was a scrutinizer dog. just types, that was a dog. Exactly. And that's why I keep, thought it was Keep perfect. gaming. Keep yeah, gaming. Yeah. This story was perfect for a Fiend's cast. It has a central scrutinizer and drones. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I thought that was very interesting. And a Simpsons that, uh, reference. That the way it works is is these operators, the people who actually push the buttons, uh, they don't make the call. Some voice in their head, some central scrutinizer somewhere, uh, tells them, kill that person, kill this person. Um, the article goes on and it, and it talks more about Bryant's experiences. Uh, and he basically says, you know, we would follow these people around for, uh, for weeks. You know, we would just get an order. Hey, keep it, keep track of this guy. Keep they never gaming, get the, keep gaming, ne- keep gaming. Exactly. They never get a reason for why they're, they're following this guy. And they watch them being good, good parents. He said a lot of them were really good dads. You'd see them with their kids. Yeah. And that he was also said, that and he also said that, uh, that, in Afghanistan, it's so hot in the summer that a lot of people sleep on their roofs. So he'd actually see them making love with their wives. And it was like mm-hmm. two infrared blobs becoming one. Two infrared spots becoming one. Yeah, yeah. He says, then, he said, yeah, he said got I got to know them until someone higher up in the chain of command gave me the order to shoot. And he says he felt remorse for the children whose fathers he was taking away because, like you said, he thought they were good daddies. <sighs> I mean, think of that. And... and this is why we talk about drones so much because they are yeah. going to be over America. There's going to be some some guy just like this, and, and the person no, they are the over America. They're over my town. But drones like this, these are predator drones. These are Reaper drones. I mean, you don't have a predator drone over Casper working for the the gas How and do oil you know? bu- bureaucracy. Well, you might, <laughs> but but uh, not as prevalent as somewhere like Afghanistan or Pakistan or Yemen. And I doubt the Air Force is running it. If it's over your town, it's the NSA or the CIA or something like that. Um, and that's another good point to remember is, is this is all the, the – um, this guy's in the Air Force. This is an article about Air Force drone operators. Uh, the CIA, their information is a lot more secret. So we don't really know how they think of these things and, and what, what the experience is like for them. Um, yeah. But at least here in the Air Force, we get a little bit more transparency, and we have this this wonderful person who decided to quit because it just wore on him so much uh, that he couldn't take it because apparently he's not a sociopath, and he just has too much of a conscience. Um, and so he had to quit. Uh, now, they contrast this with uh, another woman who um, – you said she was unnamed, but is she unnamed? They, it says that her real name was covered by black oh, tape. Oh, that's right. They use a yeah. fake name because she's still yeah, active. fake name. Okay, so her fake name then is Major Vanessa Meyer. Um, don't know if that's a real name or not. Um, and for her, it's it's completely opposite. Like she has drank the Kool Aid, and to her, people are just seem to be a means to an end. You know, she's got a good job. She loves feeds it. Feeds her she family. Feels, feeds her family. Feed, feeds her family. Feels like she's a good little professional. Feels respected by the community. Um, loves the work she does. She says the the drones are great planes. Um, and she says, you know, there's no time for feelings when she's preparing for an attack. Um, you know, she gets. She gets the basic physiological responses, the adrenaline and the the fast heartbeat, but uh, no emotional type responses, and um, and she also buys the, this this other cartoonish propaganda that uh, that she's doing some good for all those women in Afghanistan and 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 like it's some kind of women's lib or or women's rights movement that that they're killing <laughs> these families for. She says um, she has two small kids and she wants to show them that mommy can get work and do a good job. She doesn't want to be like the women in Afghanistan she watched. <laughs> so instead she kills the women, the kids and the dads in Afghanistan. Yeah. Yeah, um, and it was there was a bit of like 
those women are subjugated to their husbands, so I'm doing them a favor by killing them, and I'm liberating them. Yeah, yeah. Did I read that wrong? I seemed to be what she was saying. That seemed to be the the impression. I mean, I don't think it's a direct. Is it a direct quote? Uh, I think I think it's more of a paraphrase. Oh no, there is a direct quote. The women there are no warriors. Uh, I guess that's. It's kind of vague, but yeah, the the author leaves you to leads you to believe with paraphrases in the rest of the paragraph that that she's doing them some kind of a favor. Um, it, now it doesn't look like it. It looks like she's she still likes her job. She she wants to um, keep doing it, and maybe get promotions, and maybe even return to combat. So um, that seems like one type of response to to having your overlord. Uh, tell you to do these things, to tell you to press the button that kills these people you've been following every day. Uh, the other kind of response, which I think would be the human response, uh, Mr. Brandon Bryant, who says it, it, it wore on him and he couldn't do it. And, um, and he decided the day he left was the day he walked into the cockpit, which is what they call this air-conditioned trailer. He walked into the cockpit and heard himself saying to his coworkers, Hey, what motherfucker is going to die today? And uh, I yeah. guess at that point he realized, uh, yeah, I can't do this anymore. I'm not. I'm not a monster like this. Is what I assume went through his head. Um, and I think you're right. Maybe he needs fiends in his life. Maybe he needs to know that uh, there's there's another way of viewing the world. There's another worldview out there that actually jives with those natural human emotions you feel in your heart, <laughs> with with uh, with your conscious that actually jives with natural law. Uh, it's called. Uh, you know, liberty, freedom, uh, anarcho-capitalism, freedom, phoenix, whatever you want to call it. But uh, that's what you should should embrace because then you cannot feel guilty for quitting the army. Because I bet there, I bet you're right. I bet there are people out there who call them a pussy or or said, "Oh, you just can't take it. You're not a real warrior." Yeah. Did you have any other impressions of Dare Spiegel? No, man, I'm stealing stealing time from the fiends. Oh, okay. You're like, let Nima do his thing. Yeah, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna. So, I'm doing so good. I'm gonna stop interrupting for a second. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah, man. I say go read the article for yourself. Uh, it's probably the best article I've read on drones, and it doesn't really take a stand, but I think this. I think the lesson is obvious when you read it. Uh, at least to me. Um, but it's really good journalism, I think, for that fact that it, it doesn't seem to have a bias either which way. Um, but I think if you're an intelligent person with a conscience, you kind of come away from it feeling uh, like I did. And I know I'm biased and everybody is. So I don't know if that's true or not as, as, as far as truth goes. But at least that's the impression I got. Um, read it for yourself. Write us back and, and tell us if you feel the same way. Yeah. I think we should go ahead yeah, and put man. that. Yeah. Go ahead and put that I in will. the show notes today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I guess since we're on media, uh, and I did miss listening to you and Ben the other day. I missed um, it too. I missed you too. <laughs> do, 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 okay. Uh, would you guys? I'm. I'm assuming you discussed the school shooting, or are, are you guys avoiding that? Are we avoiding that? No, we, we just talk we just talked about how Hillary Clinton is a robot. A no, robot. we talked about it extensively, actually, and I'm kind of done with it. If you got something to add, go ahead. I, I mean, uh, I'm really, I'm really trying to um, absolutely avoid w the cliche that everybody in liberty is jumping to, which is everyone's calling for gun control. That wouldn't have helped here. Blah 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 blah. This mm -hmm. kid it was uh, too, you know, he basically was too young. He, he was breaking three laws before he pulled the trigger. I mean, he stole the yeah. guns. Mm -hmm. He was too young to legally own a handgun. And he went into a gun-free zone. So mm -hmm. I, it's all just NRA 101. I don't even want to touch that. We were talking about the crocodile tears that Obama was crying yes. about a child killer when he actually kills more children in a week, some weeks, than this guy killed. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were talking about how we basically decided they weren't crocodile tears, and he's probably actually so disconnected that he actually probably heard about it and cried tears in private to his wife. He was probably very touched and hurt by what you know he probably had real tears about it even in private and that's because he's a sociopath and totally disconnected from the fact that he is a child murderer and mm -hmm. then we talked about the fact that 
Hillary Clinton fell down, pooed her pants, got a concussion, pooed her granny panties, and uh, well, that was our part. We we assumed that. Well, robots can't poop, so she's not a robot. Now. <laughs> well, she's a <laughs> she's a human robot. She's like the robots in Westworld. So, uh, uh, okay. you know, we think Obama's real flesh and blood, but we think Hillary's a robot, and that's. Uh, if you got more to add that's not been talked to death on all of the p- podcasts, go ahead. Yeah, I guess they've all been talked to death. I don't know. Uh, I've been in my own little Christmas holiday world the past couple of days. But um, I guess the thing that struck me, and maybe people have said this before, was uh, I saw the list, right? Like everybody's been posting the list of all the victims on their Facebook pages and yada yada. And let's look at the victims and and all that. Uh, and I guess what comes to my mind is... That's a lot of people for so short a period of time, and I'm not getting into the conspiracy theories yet because I just don't know enough about. <laughs> that, that he was a Manchurian candidate created in Langley. I'm not saying. I that. think it's I'm, possible. You know, well, there's one. I'm not saying it either, but there's one thing that kind of points to it is uh, friends and family were interviewed and said like he disappeared for days, didn't show up at work, didn't show up at school, no one knew where he was. You know, maybe he got kidnapped and drugged and uh, brainwashed. I don't know. I don't I don't I don't think the government did that in any particular case. In any particular case where there's a conspiracy theory about the government, it's generally lacking so much um logic that I just go, okay, you are not convincing me. But oh, yeah. the possibility that the government could and does things like that in general, absolutely. I mean, look at Operation Northwoods. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I guess it just seems really unnatural to me, and I don't know enough about the facts, and I wish they would do something like like doesn't every school, especially in a town in Connecticut where everybody is super rich and they probably tax the hell out of people, every school have a network of video cameras? Uh, I mean, even the little podunk towns in like Prosser, Washington State. How would that help? It would help us know what happened, and, uh, and they they could release the video. Us, and, and, us, us, really? Yes, us, us, people, yeah, people, everybody. No, man. No, they lock they lock down the press in situations like this. They have I, the cop. I, I, they have I know the they sheriff, do, and that's, they have that's the sheriff, kind of my point. They have the sheriff come come out with a hundred microphones sticking in his face like penises at an orgy, and they and control the narrative. They control yeah. the narrative, and th- that's exactly my point. Is is why don't if if we really want to know what happened, and if they really want to convince people of something, if if the kid really did murder this many people in one fell swoop. Why, why don't we re- review the play tape and be like, well, okay, this could have happened here. This is this this is a way we could have prevented this. See, this could have been here's locked. my critique All of, of this. Kind of here's my critique of this. Um, I think your analysis of this is like saying, I don't believe in liberty because who would build the roads? I really do. Why? Um, I think you're looking at the wrong thing. And and I think and and it's it pains me to say that to Nima because Nima so usually well, so one hundred percent right. A, you haven't let me finish, and B, I haven't really seen much of the facts. The re- the point I was really trying to make was it seems like a very <laughs> unnatural thing that one person could kill all these people. Uh, I mean, when does that happen in real life? Like even in war, even the best, most decorated sniper has he ever killed thirty people with one with a few guns with nothing but guns I mean, uh, talking about yeah, sand man. Bullets, in vietnam sands. in vietnam soldiers went into schools and just murdered everybody it was pretty common and some of them actually went to trial for it and okay. i don't know what happened yeah. i think they got you know got it. <laughs> nothing really happened mm. so um yeah. okay. now here's Fair here's I, here's the problem everybody is asking every article about it is saying what happened what was the motivation uh, what weapons were used? You know, and, and you would even understand what weapons are used is immaterial. I mean, of course you can kill 20 teenagers with two handguns in five minutes. I mean, it, yeah, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. And it's horrible, and I don't even want to think about it. And they weren't kindergartners. They were first graders, but they're still saying they were kindergartners because it sounds worse. Mm-hmm. Um, every article coming out now is saying, what was his motivation? People want to know. What was he thinking? What happened? That's like saying who would build the roads. Uh, yeah. because oh, yeah, really totally. you got to look at the fact, I think that the state causes this to happen by promising everyone a pony and encouraging mental disease in everything the state does. The guy was imitating the state, man. Most people, you know, most people that aren't just full on lovers of the state, which really is a small percentage of people. It's like 15, 20% of people who just could never be convinced by the Kool-Aid want to eat your face because you say we don't maybe need, you know, government unions. Um, <laughs> you know, the rest of the people, 
that's that's like 20% of the people. Like 5% of the people are the people running the world. And like 1% of the people are libertarians, anarchists, anarcho-capitalists, people who don't buy the government Kool-Aid. So that's like 26% of the world. The rest of the world, the vast majority of the world, are people who, by the time they get to be 20, 25, 30, they feel like, in everything they do, they feel like somewhere somebody lied to me over and over and over, and mm-hmm. they can't figure out who. And they don't yeah. place it on the state. They still vote. They don't place yeah. it on public school. They don't place it on the fact that they've been told their whole life, you can be anything you want to be if you put your mind to it and think good thoughts, which is what they teach <laughs> in school. They teach everyone's a winner, yep. comply, follow the government, get a good job, get married, do this, do that, and things will magically work out. Things will work out. They teach you that in school. They don't teach you any survival skills. They don't teach you how to balance a checkbook. They don't teach you how to get a job. They don't teach you how money really works. They don't teach you how uh, the economy really works. And they yeah. just lie to you. And people get out and around the age, somewhere between, between 20 and 30, people really get this vague, them. this vague sense of somewhere someone lied to me. The you know, 74% yeah. of the country feels this way, of any country, of the world. And most of them live a life of quiet desperation and watch American Idol and buy Christmas presents and deal with it. And... 1% of 1% of 1% of 1% of those 74% go hurt people in retaliation. Yeah. And that's what's going on here. And I proposed all this on a blog post and people yep. people were evil to me about it. People were like, man, you're evil. And I'm like, everyone is saying, what happened? What are the facts? Why did he do this? And I'm telling you the truth and you're telling me I'm evil. You're looking for something like, oh, did this principal fire him? Or did he go to this school and this principal or did his mother work there? And all this crap that has nothing to do. That is just who will build the roads crap. When I figured out the truth and I did a blog post about it and a bunch of status and even a few non-status just took me to task of like too soon or how dare you or children died. How can you say this crap? Uh, so F the world, man. Most people don't know how things work. And even the genius Nima Vidati is looking in the wrong places on this. Oh, don't, don't tell me I'm looking in the wrong places. I was, I was bringing up the conversation. But yes, your comments are brilliant and you're right about that's where we need to be looking. Um, because the thing is, uh, when I just heard you say that, is everything else uh, is just details. It's not really the root. It's the leaves on the tree. Exactly. You know, it's, like, it's like your doctor asking you, um, I, I don't know. Uh, it's, well, I, I used that analogy how, in the blog how many post. Red, how many red lights did you run into on your way to the doctor's you office? You didn't read the blog post, but I used an analogy like that in it. I said that asking the, that, that kind of questions is putting a Band-Aid on cancer. You know, oh, you've got cancer and you've got a skin lesion here. Let's put a Band-Aid on it, you know? Yeah. 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 It's not asking the right questions and it's not striking at the root of the problem. I mean, I hate to say it, but the closest thing that anybody's saying to a solution to this is a really statist effed up answer that can be abused with tyranny, but it's the closest I've heard, which is we need more money for mental health services. That's a lot closer of an answer than what happened? What weapons were used? Why was he angry? You know, the guy had mental problems and the answer isn't more government money for it and more government money for it would be used for tyranny, not only because the money's stolen, but because they're basically saying we need to have an infrastructure to where mm-hmm. if your kid draws a picture of, you know, a drone dropping a bomb, there's something wrong with him and we need to put him into therapy and drug him and uh, make sure he can never get a weapon. Right, yeah, that may be closer, but I still don't think it even hits the dartboard. It doesn't. Uh, because... But it's in I've, the right direction. Everybody <laughs> else is, you know, throwing throwing darts completely in the opposite yard. And at <laughs> least... They're at throwing least, lawn darts. <laughs> at least that's hitting on the right wall. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the reason I don't think it hits the dartboard is because uh, I feel like government mental health services exacerbate the problem um there's a blog post i read uh it was called it's called from a girl called the anarchist soccer mom i don't really know what i hate kind of her i hate I, her and we got yeah, to break I was, but I was let's just, come back i was just i was just gonna She's, caveat that but right. uh we'll come back with with more of her. i'm not saying i'm, I'm digging her I'm, i was gonna explain something about her article but she's we'll not come back. an anarchist she's not no an anarchist. she's not all right but we'll come anyway. back Would you like to advertise your product or service to a large built-in audience of liberty-loving consumers who truly dig the free market? Freedom Fiends is now selling ad space. Slots are reasonably priced, 
but limited, so contact us today. Write the fiends at talkback at freedomfiends.com. That's talkback at freedomfiends.com. Want to contribute to Liberty but short on cash? You can help the Freedom Fiends without even spending a post-1964 dime. Download uTorrent and start seeding Fiends episodes and DVDs to help keep us drone-proof. There's a Torrent Club link at the top of FreedomFiends.com. There you'll find our Torrent RSS feed and instructions to grab past episodes and automatically download new ones, even while you're away from the computer. You'll also get special episodes of The Fiends and Anarchy Gumbo days or even weeks before regular podcast subscribers who aren't torrenting. Leave your computer on, seating the torrents while you're at work or asleep. The more people seating The Fiends, the more drone-proof we'll be when the boot comes down. Ugh, I'm so sick of looking at Steve's wedding pics, and I'm all out of passive-aggressive comments. What else am I supposed to do at work all day? Sick of stalking your ex on Facebook? Yeah! Are you all out of cute cats and autocorrect mishaps to lol at? Duh! Freedom Fiends to the rescue! The Fiends now have a blog. Read all about the latest tyranny today. Dream about lip pair. Laugh while Western civilization collapses. Just click on the cat icon to the right of freedomfiends.com. Freedom Fiends blog. Read it! You've read books, attended lectures, and you know the Constitution well enough to know it's a well-crafted blueprint to create an ever-increasing federal empire. But there's still one thing missing. Buttons! Freedom Fiends now has buttons. We have Freedom Fiends, Anarchy Gumbo, and two designs for guns and lead the road to freedom. Wear them with pride. Use them to start conversations with statists. It's only $6 for four buttons, including shipping. Go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the link at the top that says Buttons. Okay, Anarchist Soccer Mom, I like the name of it, and I like her tagline, her tongue-in-cheek tagline. The revolution begins next Tuesday after soccer practice. I hate – I read one blog post by her, and I was like, this lady is really doing a disservice to her kid. She did a blog post about how her kid, who looks – and she has a picture of the kid. She changed the name, but she used a real picture of him, and he looks about eight and she says he may have mental problems. He could be the next guy who grows up yes. and shoots up a bunch that, of schools. That lady is saying mm-hmm. that lady is saying, Government, please come take my kid away from me. She is. And no, she literally says that. She uh he, he threatens to kill himself and so she takes him to a government place and they tell her the only thing that they can do for for him is put him in jail. And so she's like, Well, I guess I have to do that for now. <laughs> yeah. And, and and also she alludes to the fact that, that he's been going through all these tests and, and getting all these kinds of things like the school telling them this and that and trying all these different things, but it's all things that the state system has told her to do. And to me, reading it, I got the impression that what the kid really hates more than anything is being poked and prodded by yeah. these state functionaries. I don't it's think being it, in these in these Kafka S institutions that the kid I don't really think hates. an eight year old can really be determined to be a threat. I really don't. Yeah, I think she's yeah. projecting, and I mean, she's doing something that, like, even the government wouldn't let, wouldn't let someone else do. Post a picture of a kid and say this kid has mental problems. That would be illegal. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess you could say a kid's her property. She can do it, but I think it's a real. If if no, she's no, wrong, I, who, I think you're wrong when you say the kid's your property. Well, no, if but a lot of people think that. Yeah. So you know okay. that that the parent should be able to do that. I think that's really violating that kid's rights because. That mm-hmm. kid is going to be branded from her doing that. I think that lady is re I don't want to say bad mother, but I'm going to say she is really, really, really doing a disservice to her kid and to herself by making that all public and showing a picture of that kid. That's just yeah. reprehensible, man. Yeah. And yeah. it's given anarchists a bad name. I don't like her and I will publicly shun her. Yeah. Yeah. I got that same impression from her and, um, and, the reason I brought this up and I wanted to bring up this blog post is because you're saying, well, people maybe are hitting the same wall, not the dartboard, when they say something about, uh, you know, more health care resources, more mental health resources, which is kind of the point she makes is, hey, right now, all we can do is send my crazy kid to jail. Why, why can't we figure something else out? My eight year old, send my eight year old to jail. Yeah. But it seems like what she's calling for is for the state to do something like that. Uh, I don't Boy, know how not, she calls it. So not anarchist, anarchist man. Ugh. Well, al- also in the blog post, her like cartoonish uh, picture of herself is her um, holding a baby in her right arm and a soccer ball in the left arm, wearing an I Love Shea shirt that's red and uh, <laughs> in a beret with a red star on it. Oh, my God. 
What? what? So, a- Man, Ugh. I a- think she, she's really- that sounds like a COINTELPRO agent trying to discredit uh, Anarchy to me. I mean, it probably Maybe. isn't. It's probably just someone who's really, really uninformed. Well, well I, yeah, that's what I think. But I don't know because I was, I was looking. I was curious. So I looked through her um, – her older post, just for this month, and the post before that is called Semper Fi. What oh, it means it's about how the great da- the, it is to be the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's what it means to be the daughter of a Marine. And, um, and the last line is, you love America anyway. And she goes into, uh, I guess, some kind of Marine Latin. Dulce et decorum est pro patriot. You know, she mori. should just change the name of it to Revolutionary Soccer Mom, and then everything would be perfect and fit and work. <laughs> she should. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. And I'm going to link her so she finds this. I want her to hear this. Good, good. <laughs> yeah, so um, I got some agendas if we're done with this. Um, I guess the only other thing is I, I did want to say there there is one mainstream solution, or not solution, but there's one mainstream idea um, out there. Uh, on USA Today, you know, they did a whole boilerplate thing that was very common, very not not good. It was the whole, well, we could do some things like, you know, uh, high-capacity magazine bans and more background checks and yada, yada, yada. But they did have a link at the top that said, you know, an opposing view that was also written for USA Today. And it was some law professor arguing for the banning of no-gun zones or gun-free zones, um, which I thought, you know, yeah, it's kind of common, but I thought that that's good that that's out there, that mainstream, that we can talk about that and say, hey, maybe maybe getting rid of the gun-free zones is one easy thing government could do like that. Just so Yeah, I mean, and this gun, is... Gun-free this zones is, are outlawed now. This is NRA 101, and you're talking about banning is, something as a solution, but it is a, it is a conversation. Well, it's not banning something as a solution. It's It's... It's banning a government action, which well, I think isn't is a good Texas, kind of banning. Isn't Texas, isn't it legal in Texas for a, a teacher with a concealed carry permit to pack? Or was that just something Mi- proposed? I think that might be proposed. I'm not sure. It could be. Um, but I think the big debate in Texas was more about higher education. I don't know if it, it stretched to uh, elementary school. See, and I still say like that's that. looking at the wrong thing because uh, I think the thing is <laughs> – adding more gun positive education to where teachers wouldn't say, first of all, get rid of the public schools. Yeah, uh, secondly, go. get rid of the kind of education to where people think gun, I wouldn't carry a gun. I'm around children. And, you know, I really liked one state solution. I saw if you're going to go with state solutions is there's a picture floating around now in response to this of they should do, we should do it the way they do it in Israel. And it shows, the teacher uh, with the automatic weapon on the bus bus load of kids. Well, are you have you seen one? This is different from what I'm saying. Are you guessing? Uh, I've seen one like that, yeah. Okay, this one is a group of kids at a zoo, and there's a woman uh-huh. standing next to them with an automatic weapon who I don't know okay. if she's the teacher with those kids. She might just be, you know, in Israel, literally, people walk around, you know, people that are in the, in the reserves walk around with – automatic weapons, um, right, which right. would really quell <laughs> gun freeze. Zo- Basically there aren't gun free zones, but it also kind of means like the military is everywhere acting like cops and eyes and ears. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I guess you're right. We should get to the root of it, but the, the, there's a root to that. I mean, you don't need a state solution necessarily. Uh, I'm saying that, that that's good that people are getting in that direction. You know, this is in USA today as a, Hey, if you don't buy this bullshit ar- article about, you know, banning high capacity magazines. Here's the opposing view. USA Today is, is, is uh, dumb. I know. I know. It's a but really weird it's, mix of statism and right wing and left wing. It's kind of like trying to appeal to the lowest common denominator to everybody. It is. And it is. The but reason to see that in there, and and <sighs> the root of it, it like, well, fine. Go go ahead. Well, you've kind of been on vacation for a few days, and I've been down in the trenches dealing with uh, probably five contacts an hour from a couple hundred people saying, here's my take on, and it's a bunch of who would build the road stuff. And I've literally been dealing with it since the morning it happened full time. You haven't, mm-hmm. you know, and we talked about it for a large part of the cast yesterday. Uh, I know you're excited about it and I don't want to quell you, but it's kind of like, this is all everyone's talking about. And aren't the fiends about something different? Yeah. I mean, isn't that what we said we we're going to do was not, not do what everyone else is doing, which is do whole episodes or whole segments on the news of the day that everyone's talking about. My blog post just slays everybody. Just go read it. Just go read school shootings. I blame the state. Go read that on the Fiends blog. It's 
it, it's and it's short. It's like 200 words and it is more than equal to and surpasses 2 million words that everyone else is saying. I nailed it. Okay. I already nailed it. I already did it. Okay. I already built okay. the roads, man. All right, cool. I already built the scrolls. roads. Let's talk about squirrels. Well, we had an agenda today. And I don't mean to quell you, man, but it's kind of like you don't understand that I've been dealing with this since it happened. And you've been like not even checking your email and you've been out with family and that's great. But I've been dealing with it. I, I've been talk. I've been, I've had every conversation we're saying. I'm, I'm sick of it. Okay. Let's move on, man. And really the thing is, um, when there's a shooting, people talk about it and it's not addressing the issue. It really isn't. And people just buzz in circles about it. And even people who are smart get stuck up in the 24 seven news cycle and, and get brainwashed by it. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to go there. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm past that, man. And you know, they're going to well, inoc- inoculate us from indoctrination. Well, I want to read the fiends glossary and comment on it. All right. I, w- I want to go back and forth on it. Okay. Let me get um, there. Hang on a sec. Let's take a break. All right. This is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends. I've been on the World Wide Web since its inception in 1994. I've tried dozens of web providers in that time. The only one that hasn't broken my heart is HostGator. HostGator has unlimited server space, unlimited throughput, and a guaranteed uptime of better than 99.9% for only $150 a year. You can pay a little less elsewhere, but you'll pull out your hair dealing with anyone else. HostGator has great service and unlimited tech support only a phone call away 24-7-365. HostGator is where pros like the Fiends host because we know how to do it right. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the HostGator affiliate link on the right sidebar to sign up today. What does freedom mean? Tune in to LRN.FM to find out. LRN.FM is the Liberty Radio Network, a collection of live talk radio and podcasts, all coming from a principled pro-liberty perspective. LRN.FM show hosts aren't left, right, or conspiracy kooks. You can tune in 24-7 to LRN.FM via your phone, computer, satellite, and more. Listen free anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Uh, so why they don't understand, you know, you look on one hand, somebody that, that uh, supports gun violence, excuse me, that supports gun control might support the end of prohibition. They might have that kind of cross uh, understanding or misunderstanding on those issues, which is why Michael Dean's movie Guns and Weed is so brilliant, because it, it helps bring people together who, on one hand, you know, conservatives might be able to see that guns should be legal, but not weed. A liberal might be able to see that weed should be legal, but not guns. And it really shows pretty clearly that both of those groups are suffering from from the same trauma, that is, that something they think is valuable, something they think is important, is being prohibited to some extent by the government. And that's really tragic. It's true. I think that's a it's it's a great movie. I've seen it and it I was like cracking up watching it. And I you know, I was sort of on the same I was already like uh woken up before I watched it, but I think that it's it's genius to take these two different groups and they're, you know, in Guns and Weed, it just sounds like, what is that? And, and there's brilliant <laughs> use of satire yeah. in that movie as well. Exactly. So prohibition isn't going to solve your problem. It's not – prohibition of guns – is not going to end gun violence in the same way that prohibition of cannabis hasn't stopped people from getting high. So you need to just let people be free, and that's why we're seeing a lot of the problems we're seeing. But I think that the reason on the media, as far as it, you know, it's anti, tends to have an anti-gun bias, is a lot of the people that work in media come from academia. You know, they've been trained at government schools. They've they've learned the ropes in a lot of cases at a government college. And most of those places are very anti-weapons and very openly anti-weapons and preach that. More coming up. You can take control. Share your thoughts at 855-450-FREE. It's Free Talk Live. So that was a little bit from uh, Free Talk Live. They talked about yeah. the Guns and Weed movie the other day. And I like that because they basically... You know, I mean, they're the daily news show, not not the for the ages uh, uh, book, audio book that we make all the time, which is important. And it's important that they do it. So they talked for about an hour about these shootings. And I liked that at one point they basically said the solution is go watch Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. (laughs) 
<laughs> totally, totally. And uh, it's really accessible, too. I mean, it's not as macho libertarian flash, anarchy, and heroin in the vending machines, and every kid should have a gun. Like uh, That's the song you're working on. That's the song you're working on. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, it's a little bit more accessible to everybody. You know, your right-wing gun nut and your pot token burning man veteran. Uh, so, yeah, guns and weed, man. Buy it for Christmas. Yeah. Somebody just sent me something that's kind of mind-blowing, one of our Canadian fans. And this week I'm sending out uh, free Fiends buttons to everybody who's – donated that we didn't send out to before which is a bunch of canadians yes. basically i was like i don't want to send stuff to canada but i did um i did today so mark schistler sent us a photo of a canadian um cigarette pack i'm sending it to you right now that has pictures of eye surgery on it it is the most graphic friggin' thing i think i've ever seen and this is what you have to put up with in canada to buy cigarettes why eye surgery does does tobacco do something to your eyes I didn't know about? Smoking may increase the, your risk of age-related macular degeneration, a condition uh, that can cause permanent uh, vision loss. There uh, is no effective treatment in most cases. Um, there's a lot of kinds of cancer that cigarettes can cause, and this is one of the least common, but it's the most graphic picture. It's an eye held open looking like um, Alex in the end of Clockwork Orange with a doctor sticking yeah. a syringe into the eyeball. I'm not even right. going to post this, man. You can go search it if you want. But, that, that's uh, what I was going to say. It looks more like anything to me is that scene <laughs> in Clockwork Orange. Like, it looks like, like look at this now because it's so hilarious because they're making you look at it as well because they're I forcing know. it to be on the cigarette box. I know, man. Uh, it's hilarious. Also, in Canada, there's 25 cigarettes in a pack. That's kind of cool. <laughs> They're probably $40 <laughs> a pack Canadian. Ah, probably. Uh, did you see this picture someone sent of the Freedom Fiends podcast on their laptop with their gun next to it? And then yes. DJ pointed out there's a spoon in the back. And someone said, is that a heroin spoon? <laughs> guns and spoons, the road to freedom. <laughs> I guess they like guns and heroin. I'm a true anarchist. Uh, it's probably just his soup spoon for lunch, but I thought it was pretty funny. Mm, it's yeah, my uh, yeah. my desktop picture right now. Guns yeah, it doesn't, and spoons. It doesn't, it doesn't look all burnt up, so... <laughs> yeah, it's pretty awesome. Though. I like it. Yeah, yeah. Go fiends. So, um, the fiends glossary. I want to read it. Is that a Gaunt revolver? What? Hold on. What, what I, revolver I is that? He has I know it's. Uh, I think it's the English equivalent, the Webley. No, that's an American one. That's an old cowboy one. Is it? Okay. All yeah, right. yeah. Well, the um, Nagant anyway, ones sorry. are even weirder looking. So, sorry, just go had a gun let's, question. But go let's on. go to the fiends glossary. Glossary. Yeah. Yes. And read it. And here's why I want to read it because it's important to future archaeologists who discover the fiends BitTorrent uh, stuff after the site is put down by a drone, droning droning whoever's uh, hosting our gator data. Um, you know, they're not going to be able to decipher everything we say without the glossary. So I want to put it <laughs> into an episode. So right. let's go ahead and... It's, it's our Rosetta Stone. Yes, future. yes. So let's take All turns right. reading it. And we'll um, discuss it a little bit so you'll have a little bit more context if it's, uh, you know... Just, if, you have, just for, if you have a comment, posterity. yeah, and I want to apologize for Hammer and Nima. I really do. We talked off off cast a bit, and uh, yeah, I just yeah. want to be different, man. I don't want to be like the Alex Joneses of the day. I don't want to be I like know. everyone else. And I you know, know. He's, there, he's, there were some clever backhanded compliments, though. Like, like you're such a genius. How do you not get it? <laughs> that's a that's a pretty hilarious backhanded. Compliment. It is. It is. And Alex Jones, stop, is, stop stop being such an idiot, genius. Alex <laughs> Alex Jones is important because you know a lot of people's uh, path to liberty is. Ron Paul to Alex Jones to the Freedom Fiends. So without him, there'd be a bigger leap. Uh, yeah, apparently. I think apparently. we're closer to Ron Paul than we are to Alex Jones, but people seem yeah. to come the, from Ron Paul to Alex Jones to us. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, fair enough, Ron, Paul, Ron Paul's an anarchist now, and Alex Jones is still talking about who to vote for in 2016. Is he really? I haven't listened to him in a long time, man. You know who I'm, you know I'm going to back in 2016 is um, – uh, who's, the, who's the guy who said who sang the song day oh day oh harry, harry belafonte Bel harry belafonte <laughs> is so evil man he recently did an open letter to obama thing on some news program where he said that obama should d jail detractors oh wow that is so square man and i was yeah. like harry belafonte still alive wow yeah I prefer Scott Horton's thing of obama should be buried under the maximum security prison for war crimes Wow. Man, they're going to drone Scott before us. Although yesterday's cast was pretty drone-worthy, man. You should you should check it out. 
Oh, I totally am. Like I yeah. said, that's first on my list. Of we were railing on Obama and Romney and uh, Hillary's granny pa- pooing herself, <laughs> getting the squirts into her granny panties. Yeah. In my new song, I still call I still call the entity of the state, the presidency, Obama. Oh, Romney. Obama. Obama. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Uh, I like it. Because it, it rhymes better. And let's let's not give it up, right? Let, let's keep pounding home the point that it would have been the same shit if Romney was elected. Well, I was kind of hoping Romney would get elected. And, you know, one reason I gave was that I think it would turn a few liberals anarchist. But I, I also think that if Romney was elected, um, people would, it would start listening. right wingers anarchists too because they would have realized, hey, uh, yeah. we still got all the same problems. Hopefully. Hopefully. I think it would have increased the Fiends listenership too because I think that a lot of liberals who hate us because we bitch about o- Obama – would uh, suddenly start listening because we'd suddenly be bitching about, you know, Romney bombing Iran on his first yeah. day in office. Yeah, don't you remember how anti-government the liberals sounded when Bush was in office? Oh, yeah, man. Like, like my Where'd friend from- Where are those people? My, my good friend from the Indian Reservation who has been so offended about secessionists recently posted something that was like, uh, it was on like one of the churches- at uh on the reservation it said america love it or leave it or something like that you know one of those things and he was like this is what i say to all those people who are too afraid to take on the american challenges and i was like you would have never in a million years posted something like that during the years between 2000 and 2008 you you would never have said anything like that and you know cindy sheehan I've always thought as a loudmouth liberal, but I actually liked that she's sticking to her guns. She's one of the few liberals that's screaming at Obama now for killing people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there, there are a few good ones. Good there for her. Are. Just like in every group. But yep. um, so the fiends glossary. Fiends glossary. We'll start with uh, AK or simply K. Uh, AK forty seven rifle. Well, that was kind of obvious. Um, AKs are under five hundred bucks. Are they still though? Yeah. Around ish, yeah. Um, okay, I was gonna wait after the twenty first to buy new guns because I bet the prices are kind of high right before the twenty first because people are stupid. Christmas um, guns. <laughs> AKs are under. Well, no, because the end of the world bullshit. Um, <laughs> AKs are under five hundred bucks. Anyone who has a flat screen TV but not an AK has their priorities wrong. I'm gonna All let right. you read a bunch of them. You're good well, at it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Pause. Uh. I have a flat screen TV, but it was a hand me down. Like somebody gave it to me for free. I doubt I would have bought one on my own. So. And a flat screen TV is actually a lot cheaper than uh, than now, an AK these days. Nowadays, you can buy one for nowadays. like two hundred bucks. Although yeah. you can buy an AK for about two hundred and seventy five bucks. Now, uh, are SKSs still a lot cheaper? Because the last time I checked, they were kind of raising in price, like close to an AK. So why? I know Ben got AK? a deal on like a bunch of them, and. Uh, did things yeah. with them to where they can be gotten if needed later. Oh, good. Good for Ben. All right. Cool. So we'll go ahead and go on to the next one. The AK Dance is the next entry in the glossary. And that is a celebration common in the Middle East whereby a crowd of people bounce on the ground and semi-unison, sing, yell, point their AK-47 rifles into the air, and sporadically fire their AKs into the <laughs> Yeah. They show it on the news whenever there's a revolution. They uh or you know like when they kill Gaddafi, when, when the CIA kills Gaddafi, they'll show uh they'll show foot I don't know if they did. They, they, America helped. America actually found him with a drone and passed the information on. Did you know Yeah. That? Yeah, well that was in that article yeah. Uh, yeah. that we just read from Der Spiegel. Um Yep. So, it, so yeah, they, um, they show news footage of it of like, you know, people are dancing and celebrating in the streets because this tyrant is dead and they show the AK right. dance. Right. And uh, that's not necessarily a racist uh, Jack Berkman kind of thing. The reason we have that there. It really happens, man. A, it really happens. Uh, B, it's poor gun safety. So we'd like to point that out. Uh, C, I think it, it's a propaganda thing for the American government, the United States government to uh, oh, I to think show they that, show. I think to, they to show make this, people think that all oh, these people are crazy people. I think thing. they show the same footage over and over and over and over. Right, I think right, that like, you know the CIA there's a, there's a paid a bunch of have. actors. The CIA paid yeah. a bunch of actors in in the seventies, and they probably redid it recently in high def. Uh, right. And I think they just show the same stuff over and over. So I would call that a gov meme or a government meme uh, mm-hmm. that they use to scare you into things. All right. So do you want to read the next one? Anarchist. I can no, nah, man. I'm smoking. Well, the, you do it. But you're, you're I wrote the them. You do. I wrote most of them. You do it. <laughs> All right. I, I can delegate as chief anarchy officer. <laughs> but you're also chief anarchy officer. I'm co-chief anarchy officer. Yeah. All right. So anarchist, uh, according to our glossary. Contrary to some people's beliefs, this does not mean a violent person who wants blood in the streets. 
It means a peaceful person who does not believe in any government. Michael and Nima are libertarians as well as anarchists. They are ANCAPs, i.e. anarcho-capitalists, not leftist anarchists. Um, yep. And we want to have Nima debate a leftist anarchist, an anarcho-syndicalist. So if there are anybody out there who knows any who are uh, really smart about it and not mm -hmm. you know just reading the Wikipedia <laughs> article, yep. uh, we'd love to have you – Come on the Anarchy Gumbo and debate uh, Nima. So write us at yep. talkback at freedomfiends.com if you know someone like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, here's something interesting on that same sort of line of thought. I was listening to somebody interviewing Anthony Gregory. Um, I think it was Anthony Gre Gregory. And he was talking about how, uh, you know, sort of the way the history works out about these different terms and what they describe. Um, Leftists kind of shared uh, things with um, you know classical liberals and and what are now called anarchists, uh, I guess in the sense of, or libertarians I guess in the sense of uh, what they wanted to have happen in the world you know like the individual and liberation of people which which then leads to you know making sure minority groups and different groups have the same rights as everybody else. They still give uh, lip service to that liberals do, but it's in the guise of the government needs to demand exactly. that everyone and, has individual liberty, which is just right. like saying I'm going to have sex to preserve virginity. Yes. Well, that that's that was his argument. Is that's where the diversion happens? Is is yeah, we think that people should be equal and all that kind of good stuff, you know, good heartwarming stuff, but uh, people who tended to become leftists and progressives, um, they had a different means to that end. They thought it was okay to use any means necessary to achieve those ends, which in the end kept those ends from being achieved. And then you also have the horrible means. So it's a lose-lose situation. Whereas those who became libertarians and anarchists and anarcho-capitalists, um, those are the ends. We still have the same. We want you know uh, everybody to be considered an in individual and equal in terms of uh, of their moral equivalent. Um, but we don't think that you can you can ruin morality and do horrible things to get to a world like that. Yeah, right. and um, I'm I'm very into the digressions here because they add to it. But this is going to be a two parter thing. We're not going to have time to uh, all right. to get this all done. Well, then, and we're we're going to go sell some things right now, and then come back and do the last ep the last segment all on this, and then continue it on another cast. All right? Okay. Admit it. You hate shopping for Christmas. You do. It's a hassle coupled with a burden, mechanically checking off friends, relatives, and coworkers from your list. You're probably not even religious, but if you are, is buying your cousin some little made-in-China piece of plastic really celebrating the birth of your savior? This holiday season, why buy gifts for friends and relatives? Most of them are status anyway. You should send that money to the Freedom Fiends instead. The Freedom Fiends will use your money to help spread education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. If you want to help provide inoculation from indoctrination, go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post to send your money to the Fiends instead. Because buying crap for unappreciative statist relatives won't get your name on the golden floppy disk of redemption. And if you must shop for Christmas, please do it through the Freedom Fiends Amazon link over on the right side of freedomfiends.com. It won't cost you anything extra, and Amazon will save you the danger of holiday drive-by stabbings at your local mall. Amazon pretty much sells everything you can buy on this earth, except for guns and weed. But they do sell the DVD, Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom, so get that for your gun-hating stoner brother or neocon gun nut dad. They'll thank you for it. That's freedomfiends.com. Have you swallowed too much of the state's poison? The Freedom Fiends will stick their fingers down your throat and hold your hair back while you hurl. Check out the new show, The Freedom Fiends Agenda, on Freedom Fiends Radio. Click on the blue Listen link at freedomfiends.com, streaming live every Thursday from 4 to 6 p.m. East Coast, U.S. time, on Freedom Fiends Radio at freedomfiends.com. The Freedom Fiends Agenda is Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati's fun and feisty chat about market anarchy, self-defense, real money, the digital police state, activism, DIY media, sex pets, and rock and roll. Call in soon before they get droned. Live studio number 307-215-5171. 
or via Skype to username kittyfeet1. Listen live at freedomfiends.com. That's freedomfiends.com. So what's next? <laughs> I like the next one. All right, so next. Uh, this is all Michael. Beast Lick Wyoming. <laughs> this is the Fiends version <laughs> of uh, Bumfuck Egypt. You've heard that one, right? B-F-E. Mm-hmm. That's a very popular one. So ours is Beast Lick Wyoming, or B-L-Dub. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, basically, you know, just whenever we're talking in general terms about something or want to have an example or a, a thought experiment or an imagination land, often Michael will drop Beast Lick Wyoming. Yeah, it's kind and of funny. there's yeah, actually Beast a place Lake. like that. It's Matiti, Wyoming. And we talked Matiti. about that yesterday because uh, – that guy from um, Bedlam Publishing posted something on his Facebook where he said, now I've seen everything. I was in Matitsi, which is a population of 320, uh, at an old cowboy bar, and I saw two leathery old Wyoming cowboys talking at the bar about the drama they'd witnessed on Facebook that day. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Uh, yeah, man. Okay, so next, bomb. Uh, oh, you just said course, bomb on the internet. We're going to get in trouble. I said bomb on the I can't say bomb on the internet. No, we can when we're talking about Michael's band. Um, do you want to read bomb since that was you? Or no, do man. you want me to I'm read really, it? You digress. I'm, having, I'm watching squirrels. You're doing great. Watching squirrels. All right. Bomb. That's Michael's old band. It started in 1986. It broke up in 1993. So that's a pretty good run for a band, right? What, seven years? All right. Bomb was popular in the underground punk scene, toured the world. That's nine years, man. In the world. Is that four plus seven? Four plus three is seven, man. But, um, okay. Oh, you're right. Yeah, you know, I was in a band, which means I'm not very good at math. All right. Anyway, Bomb toured the world. They did three records on indie labels, one record on Warner slash Reprise, then Imploded. Um, There's a link to that Bomb music or some Bomb music, uh, and there's also a video if you go actually read the glossary. Um, although I guess you can't if this is if this <laughs> audio glossary is being used for its intended purposes. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, if it is being used for its intended purposes, and we have been drone, and you're listening to this post, uh, some kind of apocalypse. Well, actually, um, we uh, a couple of the bomb torrents. records are in the torrent. So That's if you what I was are up. Yep. if you're the archaeologist getting you know someone comes into your office in Libpair in this privately funded uh, research group that you're working for and hands you this. Uh, disc. I don't even know what media things will be on, and it'll probably just they'll just come in and blink at you, it, and it'll, it'll come be from a their crystal that'll light yeah, up, yeah, and have like the voice of God coming out. Of yeah, it. it'll be a little, it'll be the grain <laughs> size of a grain of sand, and have hundreds of terabytes of information on it. Yeah, so yes, there's and you'll in ingest there. it and then experience it through your brain. Uh, yes, so, but there there are torrented. Um, or, or you can get bomb records through torrents, and there are some that are up that um, are actually not available anywhere else. Is that right? Or at least one of them like that? Most of the really bomb find. stuff is really, really out of print. Um, yeah. I don't think any of it's still – well, actually, the stuff that's on Boner Records, that guy sells MP3s on iTunes. And the stuff that's on Warner Brothers, that guy sells stuff on iTunes. But the Love Sucker DVD – CD – uh, a thousand were pressed, and that company went out of business. The first bomb record to Elvis in Hell, uh, we pressed a thousand copies on vinyl, and it went out of print uh, in like 1987. So yeah, a lot of it is only available on Fiend Torrents. God, you used to have to be so much more motivated to make music and put it out there, huh? Now you yeah, just man. upload a file from the computer in your closet that you. When made. I was your age, we had to walk both ways uphill. Press I when vinyl, the, God, when I can't the, even imagine what that'd be like. Oh, we pressed vinyl. vinyl. We got it done in Canada, and it, we paid like two bucks per. You know, we paid like two thousand bucks. I actually borrowed eight hundred bucks from Jack Dean, and then we paid him back when we got signed to Warner Brothers. Um, <laughs> and then I, you know, did paid drug research, and we all worked construction and bike messenger jobs and bartender jobs to raise the rest. So we paid this company in Canada to do it. And when we got this like call from the airport and said, yeah, we got this shipment here of records from Canada for you, but uh, you got to come down here and pay $300 customs fee. So the government, Ah. like the date, and we didn't have them for our record release party because of it. Like we had to borrow 300 bucks and it took a few days. So the government kept the first bomb record from coming out on time. FTG, homie. All yeah. right. Speaking of the government and FEG, uh, here we have the Central Scrutinizer next on the Fiends Glossary at freedomfiends.com slash glossary 
hyphen four hyphen freedom hyphen. You know, now if you had <laughs> if you had a thousand bomb records shipped from Canada, they'd blow them up. <laughs> they'd blow them up and charge you for they'd, they'd have the bomb for doing spot. that send yeah. you a bill yeah yeah a bill for everybody's overtime <laughs> yeah all right so yeah a central scrutinizer that equals any government's attempt to spy on its subjects private communication whether by internet phone or meeting on the street it's a takeoff from frank zappa riff where between songs on a record he whispered and imitated someone called the central scrutinizer a personification of the people who wanted to censor Frank's records or use or our use of the central scrutinizer is to represent the entire state mechanism of a moral spying on and censorship of citizens, but personified as if it's one person whose full time job is spying on the freedom fiends and listeners of the fiends. Yeah. Yeah. Which uh, you get to hear a lot in fiends episodes. You hear this. This, 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 this is the central scrutinizer. scrutinizer. Yeah. Um, now I don't know if there's as many examples yeah. of spying on listeners yeah. of the fiends though. Yeah. Do you do you call people in, in their spare time, in your spare time, and say this is a central scrutiny? Yeah. yeah. You should start doing that if you don't this already. Is, this is the this central, is central scrutinizer. scrutinizer. No, 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 no. That voice should be for the central liberator. That sounds uh, more godlike and relaxing. I like this voice. Hi. I, I am, am the, the central, central liberator. liberator. <laughs> Right. No, no, the pitch shift makes it seem creepy. I like I like the echo yeah. or the delay uh, for for the nice, relaxing, you know. All right, so yeah. we'll move on. Yeah, that one. Or that's just reverb, but that's good too. So we yeah. got Christian Sharia up next on the glossary. It's a term Michael and Nima invented for the policies of some Christian conservatives. I thought we took this one off. Oh, well, we took it we, off, but we, we, we had to leave it. it. We retired it, but we, we have to leave it, it so people will uh, – it'll be the Rosetta Stone for the first uses. 20 or 30 right. episodes where we used okay, it. Okay, good. So that, that's a good important thing to say before we read this. Uh, Christian Sharia, term Michael and Nima invented for the policies of some Christian conservatives who claim they are for small government and claim they respect the Constitution – but they also want to pass a bunch of silly laws that violate the Constitution and increase the size of government. It includes most members of what is commonly called the Tea Party. Michelle Bachman, Newt Gingrich, Rush Limbaugh, Rick Perry, Bill O'Reilly, Sarah Palin, they all practice Christian Sharia, and it's therefore not – wait, and is therefore not and they Christian are, Sharia. And they are Christian Shareans. Oh, they are. Okay, okay. Got it. So other Christians who are not Christian Shereans include Judge Andrew Napolitano, Sheriff Richard Mack, Boston Tea Party. Uh, Michael and Nima invented the term Christian Sharia in 2010. Uh, Ron Paul. Ron Paul. Oh, that's a really good one. Yeah, obviously Ron Paul. Um, I kind of want to say Lou Rockwell. I feel like he's always having people on that are like Christian and he kind of seems Catholic or something. I don't know what Lou Rockwell is, but uh, – he sometimes talks about religion, and he's very much not a Christian Sharian. Uh, Lawrence Vance is another really good one who's, who's so anti-war and is always calling out Christians on being pro-war and how ridiculous it is for them to be pro-war. Um, so anyway, in 2012, it was first used in the lamestream media on CNN here, and there's a link to that. Um, as of September 9, 2012, we actually retired the term. The Fiends retired – the use of the term Christian Sharia because it was insulting to both Christians and Muslims. Um, it's kind of inaccurate. It's a gross generalization. We now call it religious statism, which kind of goes with our, our other thought that, you know, statism is kind of a religion or it is indeed a religion or a belief system. Um, whereas, you know, it was kind of after I interviewed Will Coley and I realized that Sharia for them, um, it wasn't an involuntary thing, and there was – the way he described it and the way he reads it, uh, force can't be involved because if you force somebody into a pattern of behavior, it's not their true behavior. Uh, you know, you can't, you can't give them brownie points and a golden star for doing something you force them to do. Uh, so because of that, uh, we didn't think Sharia was a good term for this. Um, so that's one of the reasons we retired it. We'll go ahead and move on yes. to uh, Chromed Robot Turd. Uh, coined by Michael. Uh, Chromed Robot Turd. First Chromed came out robot in ads. Turd. In, in, in I think the first batch of, of ads we did once we got on LRN, right? Um, and that uh, Chromed Robot Turd is any mobile device or smartphone that people use to listen to the Freedom Fiends. Oh. Um, 
Although nowadays, man, they're all like they have condoms on them, right? Like it's it's faux pas to have a <laughs> chrome robot turd without some thick otter box on top of it. Otter to box. Breaking. Yeah, that sounds kind of dirty too, doesn't it? What is an otter box? <laughs> I don't know that term. You know what an otter box is? Oh, um, so it's probably one of the most popular companies that makes uh, iPhone covers, and I, and I think they also maybe they make it for Android phones too. But um, it's like this silicon or this really nice supple uh, rubber type plastic you put over your phone to protect it. So if you drop it, the screen might not crack, it might not break. You know, it's it's um it's an insurance policy for your phone for the physical manifestation of your Chrome robot turd. Um, uh, is it why is it called an outer box? Because it's that's, like an that's outer the name skin. Of the com- ah. That's the name of the company. Is Otter Box. I don't know why it's called that, but that's the, the people who made the company decided to call it OtterBox. I guess because it's I don't know, man. Have you ever petted an otter? Maybe their their <laughs> skin is really rubbery or something. <laughs> Probably. Oh, yeah, yeah. They eat iPhones on their bellies. So, Compliacin is the next uh, the next entry. Compliacin. That's uh, Michael's name for an imaginary pharmaceutical drug for quote unquote treating the quote unquote recognized quote unquote illnesses. Um, illness, oppositional defiant disorder, aka libertarian flu or libertitis, i.e. inflammation of the liberty. Compliacin would likely be Ritalin mixed with Thorazine. <laughs> Thorazine is known as the chemical straitjacket and the chemical lobotomy. Um, and Compliacin uh, comes to fame from our ad we did for Compliacin uh, from a fictional company called Pilfer, <laughs> i.e. we have a pill for everything. Uh, great ad, and you've probably heard it before. So that is what complacent means whenever we talk about it. Uh, speaking of oppositional defiant disorder, and to bring it back to something we mentioned earlier in the cast, that anarchist soccer mom mentioned that as something <sighs> some state goon told her her son might have. She said, well, officials have told us all sorts of things, like he may have oppositional defiant disorder, ADD spect- or you know, uh, autism spectrum, or ADD, or intermittent explosive disorder. Um... So, yeah, and then she took her own son to jail. All right, Constitution Humper. That's our next entry. That's someone who thinks the Constitution of the United States is handed down from God and is infallible. It's also anyone who thinks that documents grant rights. Both ideas ignore the fact that the Constitution allows government, taxation, tyranny, and is a social contract that you did not sign. Bam. Um, And I think it was... It's probably a Ben Stone cast recently, I think, that he was talking about how uh, Thomas Jefferson wasn't even around. He was, like, in France during the the Constitutional Convention. And the people who wanted it hated the Articles of Confederation because they wanted a big centralized government. And uh, they were very happy that people who were the more libertarian-leaning founding fathers like Jefferson and and Patrick Henry wasn't in France, but he didn't want to touch this Constitutional Convention because he thought it was going to turn out with nothing but tyranny so he avoided it um and the people who wanted this constitution like hamilton etc uh showed up early and and already hammered out all the details of this horrible central state it's kind of like what they do now at like republican conventions they get there early with a plan on how to like screw everyone else (laughs) screw everyone else yeah yeah so if you're a constitution hubber go go rethink it listen to some fiends listen to some ben stone uh read some revisionist histories on it and and realize that the constitution wasn't some great 10 commandments document handed down by god no it was the big government folks of the day getting together to figure out how they could make the government of the united states bigger than it already was um that's so square completely square all right crazy cat spot that's another great one (laughs) uh it's next on the list crazy cat spot that's a place that most cats have on their body it's usually on the spine near the tail. Um, a lot of times you can find it by sort of rubbing them, you know, petting them and, and, and slowly scratching as you pet. And sometimes you'll find their crazy cat spot. Um, if you scratch them lightly uh, with with the finger, the cat will begin to involuntarily lick the air. <laughs> and we have a video link to this. Um, go ahead and watch that if you're reading this. Uh, if not, just imagine it in your brain. Um, and... Um, Michael read somewhere that it's a means for mother cats to get their kittens to nurse. So by licking a kitten at that point above the tail, it'll encourage them to go for a nipple, i.e. involuntarily their head will raise up 
and start licking and, and oscillating like an oscillating fan looking for a nipple. <laughs> uh, Michael and Nima use the term crazy cat spot as an analogy for how statist will allow any intrusion on everyone's liberties if it's presented under the guise of safety or think safety. of the children. The mere mention of safety stimulates the statist crazy cat spot. Um, you know, I, I'll say this um, about the shooting that we said we weren't going to talk about in Connecticut. Yeah. Um, it probably was one man acting alone, but if you were going to create an event that would make people go, okay, we can restrict guns. This would be it. Mm -hmm. You know, some guy walking into a school and shooting a bunch of first graders. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Crazy crap. Yeah. That's about safety, yeah. man. And, and you have seen that is it, it if you have a Facebook page, you've seen how this has hit people's crazy cat spots. And there's other ways of moving that finger back and forth that helps stimulate crazy cat spot. Uh, like terms like we must do something. A bunch of celebrities. Must a bunch of something. celebrities have been saying we need outlaw guns now. This has gone too wow. far. And one was wow. um, Peyton Oswalt, Patton Oswalt, who's oh. I really like him, man. But yeah, I can't he's believe, a funny he's, comedian. He's Why basically he like we need to outlaw all guns now. What an idiot. What a we need idiot. to we need to use government guns to outlaw guns now because the government's so trustworthy that only they should have guns. Yeah. I don't know. It just seems ridiculous. Once once the knowledge is out there, there's no way of getting rid of guns. I mean, that's like saying we need we need to outlaw gravity now. This is just horrible. Old ladies fall down and hurt themselves, Cars and we just crash. can't have that anymore. Yeah. We need to outlaw the laws of physics. Let's just get rid of them. You know, the next time someone let's, says... Let's outlaw death. How about we do that? The next time someone says to you that libertarians want old ladies to starve, you should say, statists want old ladies to get beat up. Because that's what cops do. They run into homes and beat... Mm -hmm. They run up into houses and beat old ladies up. Statists want old ladies to be molested, i.e. TSA. Yeah, and little yeah. kids. Yeah. Speaking of status, our next entry is dad spam. <laughs> that's one of my favorites. Yeah. This, that's um, kind of caught on. A lot of people are using that phrase now. Yeah. I'm, I'm well, it's funny because it. uh, at, at holiday party yesterday, there was um, <laughs> there were people talking back and forth about things they heard. And I looked at my wife and I'm, I'm like, was that from some dad spam that your grandma saw? <laughs> Because it literally, it literally was like dad spam in in live action. Uh, I'm, I'm looking. For, uh, I think I invented this term, and okay. I always think that. But I'm looking at. <laughs> I, I searched dad spam in quotes on Google, and there's 5,400 results, and they're all from after like March 2011, mm -hmm, which is mm -hmm. you know when we put this up. So well, well, you give the credit to the coinage to DJ your wife. Okay, she coined it, and then we started using it, and it took okay. off. Okay. So here's the definition. Dad spam is forwarded crap that old people who can barely use a computer email <laughs> to everyone they know. Usual topics include heartfelt letter from a dying Marine <laughs> or proof that Obama is a secret Muslim or things we said back in 1985. 1955. And, oh, 55. <laughs> yes. I read it as 85. Like that was really, really a long time. Because you don't even know what 1955 was. That's like, I, what's that I was pet alive, sounds? But, but I was still sucking on teats. Uh, in 1955? It, to get milk out of them. Not you were alive in 1955? 85. I was alive okay. in 1985. That's why I said 1985. But um, <laughs> anyway, so another dad spam topic. Danger. You might die if blank. <laughs> like fill that space in with anything like uh i don't know i remember an early by tide detergent an, or an early one that went around was that people are going this is how old it was it was like from pay phones and i think some of the early dad spam i think came from things that people mailed to each other because uh one of the early ones like chain was, letters yeah one of the early ones was about pay phones which don't really exist anymore in any capacity yeah. and if they do they don't take coins so but this was uh i remember getting dad spam in like 19 not dad spam but it was for my uncle uh my dad's sister's husband uh it was that people are going around to pay phones and putting aids infected syringe tips in the coin return box <laughs> yeah yeah wow um you know i remember you might that die that if you use a phone I remember that being a fear, like when I was a kid and trick or treating. Like you know, you have to have your mom check your candy because well, might that's be actually something that people did, but it. they probably did it imitating pre-internet dad some, spam. Some, you know, some dad like spam. the police said, "Oh my God, people could do this," and issued a statement, <laughs> and then someone imitated it. 
<laughs> yeah. You yeah. know, that's literally terrorism. I mean, like telling right. people that's to terrorize the public, telling people, oh, yeah. you know, to justify to use their phone. own existence. Well, it might not even be from police. I mean, a lot of people forwarded it and who knows who wrote it, but mm. go on, go on, go on. So dad spams usually easily debunked by a quick look at Snopes.com. Um, yeah, I, I think I've seen that before with things like uh, the Obama hand over the heart, and there was some other Obama thing. I forget what it was, but uh, but you actually look at Snopes, and it's like one of the top things that, that is completely a lie that has been most widely spread. So it's good to go to Snopes.com if you get dad spam, or just read it to laugh at it and realize that it is dad spam. Because dad spam is easy to spot, usually contains lots of capital letters, exclamation points, rows and rows of carrots pointing to the right. Um, from being forwarded again and again and again by people who don't know that they can remove those marks. And it's uh, always CC'd to everyone, uh, never be CC'd. Dad spam is usually sent from an AOL or Yahoo account because that's what old people still have. Uh, Michael has a theory that all dad spam originates from a team of paid hacks at some right-wing organization, uh, possibly either Accuracy in Media or the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and then again, you credit DJ with coinage of the phrase. Now, I think that this would be a good place to stop, and we'll pick it up in a future soon cast. Okay, I'm down for that. Uh, what was the last one? Dad spam, right? All right. Dad spam. Note of that. So next next time we will start with dinosaur chewing its tail, and uh, ooh, we've got a lot more to go, but um, <laughs> we'll keep going on it. And um, if you have not become acquainted with the glossary and would like to get a jump on that you can go ahead and study through that and uh, read ahead in the book of fiend um and of course if you're listening to this in the future then uh please find the next file uh, <laughs> they are numbered and uh cataloged for your um for future reference that kind of reminded me of the old uh in grade school, they used to have um, records to teach people things like vinyl records that would have talking lessons, you know, lessons uh -huh. of someone talking. Please and go to the next side. Yeah, or it would like be that, like, yeah. please flip the record over. And then later yeah. they had them with cassettes. I had those in college. Yeah, please, but, you have reached the end of lesson one. Right, please right. turn the tape over. And that's the only reason that makes sense to me is because I remember hearing that on cassette yeah. tapes because yep. I was alive in the time of cassette tapes. And in <laughs> fact, I, I played with them as a young child um, making mixtapes and recordings and trying edits that were tape to tape there were, or record there, to tape. There was a punk rock uh, compilation that my band Michael was on uh, put out by DSI Records, which was Dark Self-Image Records in about 1985. And uh, they did that on the tape. <laughs> At the end of it, it oh, said, nice. you have reached the end of lesson one. Please turn the tape over. And, yes. you know, I've always been kind of fascinated with the idea of distance learning. And I've kind of considered, like, what we do distance learning, which is why we say have DJ at the beginning of each episode now saying, welcome to the Freedom Fiends distance learning anarchy series. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> which is, you know, kind of a takeoff on like, there used to be this stuff on public television that they called the distance learning series. And it was kind yep. of cool. They'd have like some professor like teaching a class with no one in the classroom, or sometimes they even had a class, you know, and they'd be showing math stuff or computing stuff or, you know, just all sorts of stuff. And it was for people that didn't want to go to college or couldn't afford it or, uh, you know, lived somewhere that was too far from a college or, you know, were taking care of grandma and couldn't go to college, whatever, you could kind of go to college. I don't think it was, you know, I don't think you could get a certification for it, but you could learn college level stuff watching TV and they don't have that anymore. Yeah. yeah. And they don't? Are you sure? I guess I don't have public access or don't watch that kind of TV anymore. Well, but. the public act, there's actually three public access stations in Wyoming, which is kind of uh, amazing. But generally, they just show stuff about Wyoming culture and Wyoming life, like mm -hmm. the Cowboy mm -hmm. Poetry Slam and the yeah. you know Bluegrass <laughs> Festival in Matiti. Right. Yeah. So okay. if you want to look okay. at the Fiends Glossary, go to the FreedomFiends.com website. And at the top, there's a link that says Glossary, but I'll link yeah. it in today's yeah. episode. So it's been um, a good day, man. It was, was a good day. Um, the only other thing I, I missed that I did want to bring up is um, this went really – goes goes a lot better with the Der, Der Spiegel article. Um, but there was something in that article that I also wanted to mention. Um, when she's introducing one of the – the higher ups, one of the guys who's you know in charge of some aspect of the drone program, uh, as the writer is setting the spe the scene, um, I think the writer's girl, right? Maybe I'm wrong, but the writer, 
girl or boy, Shmi. Shmi explains uh, and sets the scene <laughs> by saying, uh, you know, in the dark wood paneled Pentagon, there are pictures of various Pentagon directors or defense. Oh, there's a painting heads. of a drone pa- ca- on a canvas. There's a painting of a predator drone. So I, I was looking for an image of that. I can't find it. But and you uh, know, I bet a lot of people who go to art school would love to get that job, being the guy who paints pictures for the military to hang on their walls of their really? kill machines. Yeah. Oh. Think about it, man, because a lot of people go to art school and become good artists and cannot get work. And I like to praise my friend Denise De La Serta, who was my girlfriend when I was like 14 and then later for a minute when I was like 21. Um, and we've been friends for life, and she lives in South America now. And she, uh, she's – you know, you'd think she'd be a liberal, but she hates Obama because he's killing people, and I like that. But yeah, she yeah. is one of the most amazing painters I've ever seen. She went to art college, got out of art college, moved to New York City, and was starving. And she she was driving a taxi to live and not able to sell any of her amazing paintings. And everybody that got into her taxi had a tattoo. So she got a tattoo gun and started tattooing people and became really well-known at it, got on the cover of all the tattoo magazines, nice. and actually ran – kind of an agorist tattoo shop in Jersey city. Cause it was illegal to have a tattoo shop in Jersey city, What? but she had one that was like not even hidden. Like there was a, a neon sign in the window that said tattoos. And I got a tattoo there from nice. her and nice. it was pretty cool. Okay. Well, that's yep. badass, and that's a freedom fix. And that's a good note uh, to combat the tyranny of the fact that there is most likely, I mean, there hasn't been a pick to back this up, but, uh, that's totally believable, right? That on this Pentagon wall somewhere, there is a canvas with an artistic rendering of a <laughs> freaking predator drone, of a robot that's only job is to murder people. Our founder, yeah. Like where you'd normally have in a corporation, you'd have the Our Founder painting. <laughs> right, right, right. All right, man. <sighs> All right. Good fiends. fiends. Good fiends. Worms. Peace. Love the fiends and want to help out? We do take donations and we put them back into our Liberty Projects. You can make a donation by clicking on the spinning coin on any post. But what if you want to help, but you ain't got no cash? Or you made a donation and you want to help more? Here's how you can help. Download and seed our torrents to help keep us drone-proof. There's a torrent club link at the top of freedomfiends.com. You can also blog the fiends and share episode links on Facebook, Twitter, and elsewhere. You can rate and review our movies on Amazon. Amazon and IMDb, you can rate and review the Freedom Fiends and Anarchy Gumbo and our songs on iTunes. That really helps a lot. You can buy our movies and share them with friends or give them out as gifts. And one of the best ways to spread liberty is to buy a bunch of Freedom Fiends buttons and give them out as gifts. Wholesale prices are available, and you can also comment on our site or better yet, comment about us on other sites. And please email the site link to all your friends. Thanks for helping spread the Fiends message worldwide to as many Liberty people as you can, especially to those who don't yet get it. You rock. Hello, Freedom Fiends. It's your boy, Dean. From the U.S., get the U.S. out my bloodstream. I owe me and that include indoor fiends. No one won't ask permission and I won't say please. Freedom fans, the fact that I gotta make clear it ain't about- The Freedom Fiends podcast is covered by a Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 3.0 license. Do what you want with it and spread it around. Tell two friends. Make copies. Email it to everyone you know. Go on the site and comment. This is a conversation. Every week, we'll have an exciting new episode where Michael W. Dean and Nima Vadati weave their own unique take on the way the world works and how to find your place in it. Available from freedomfiends.com. That's F-R-E-E-D-O-M-F-E-E-N-S dot com. Freedom Fiends is proudly syndicated by Alterati.com and the Liberty Radio Network. Subscribe and tell two friends. And remember, the only power they have is the power you allow them. We're not saying the Freedom Fiends are the one true path to anarchist liberation, but it's a good one. If you want to put your voluntarist money where your mouth is, consider making a donation to the Freedom Fiends. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post. Then make a one-time gift via PayPal, or set up a monthly contribution of as little as $3. Giving to the Freedom Fiends helps advance education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. The Freedom Fiends. We work hard, so send us some money.